to their Cardinal uh, jerseys. That's John Carney from Florida, the West Palm Beach area. About 80% of the time, he kicks off into the end zone. He has a strong leg. We're waiting for BC to break out of their huddle and see who their deep men are going to be. This is the last game of the year. They'll be getting the real specialists out there. They're staying close together to stay warm, Kurt. <laughs> right now, we just talked to the weather bureau here in Memphis. It's 11 degrees. 11 degrees at game time. And now Boston College breaks out. a slight breeze in the back of Notre Dame here in the first period. Regardless of the cold, Jack McNell, their coach, said we're going to come out throwing. We don't care what the weather is. Rain, mud, sleet. We like to pass. We pass to establish the run. So look for BC to start throwing the ball right away here in the first period. And we have a holdup of some kind. I think they're waiting for the bands to clear out. What about the shoes, bud? They had uh, three choices tonight, regular cleats, artificial turf shoes, or sneakers. I think to begin the game, uh, both teams will be wearing their regular grass cleats. And if it gets colder, they'll switch to something to switch. else. And as the field freezes, more and more of a tendency to go to the sneakers. All right, we're waiting to whistle. Seven-yard line, Boston College with a first down. Doug Flutie's the quarterback. He's 5'9", 175, as we said. Hit 51% of his passes during the past season. There's the tailback. And he's not a big man either. 5'8", 182, but he's averaging 5.6 yards per try. And Beastick is the fullback. And he's a big blocker, 6'2", 237 pounds. On first down, Flutie scrambling. Still, this is a typical Flutie. Throws it out. He throws it into the crowd over the sideline, threw it away. Got rid of it. He couldn't find anybody open. So it'll be second down, 10. Gieselman was the intended receiver of the tight end. And there he is right there. They go to him a lot. And Phelan is their flanker. He caught 22 passes, an average of 18.6 per reception during the season. And the other ride receiver is the man we mentioned earlier, Brennan, a senior who was truly a remarkable pass reception man with the speed he possesses. Second down, 10, Boston College on its 37, just underway. Take a look at Flutie's hands. He's a little man in height, but he has big arms, big hands, and powerful legs. Gives it off on the draw play. That's Jim Brown, number 32, from Pontiac, Michigan, the fullback. He gets to the 40, and that's all. He ran into Greg Dingens, the 10. Now, here's the line, bud. Uh, Regents to tackle, 6'4", 265, junior. McDonald is the other tackle. He's also 6'4", 262, and a senior. The uh, guards are Bardwell, 6'1", 258 pounds. And the other guard, Regan, he's 254 pounds, 6'2". And the center, Bessers, replacing Bicknell, who hurt his ankle in practice. Chris Trapuk is in at a wide receiver now. They're in a spread. Third and seven for Boston College from their 40. Woody on the straight drop back. Fires. Great catch at the 42 of Notre Dame. The ball fumbles. Was it a completion? And then a fumble. Brian Brennan with those sure hands of his. Let's see how they rule it. Brennan is 
we mentioned, has got the ability to run the very precise patterns. Flutie delivers the ball while he's making the break across the middle. He's high in the air. You can see that he bobbled it just for a moment, but then was able to make the reception and got them off the hook. Third down, long yardage when the play was called. Oh, a big third down play by Doug Flutie. First down, Boston College on the Notre Dame 43. They're in their single back setup. but it's complete inside the 15 to the 14. So Janik went back down the field to make the grab and hitting uh, Brendan Murphy, who played very little this year, caught the ball. Again, Flutie gets excellent protection from his offensive line. Give him this much time, let him slide a little bit in the pocket. He'll find the receivers open. And Brennan's down past everyone, linebacker on him, who did not have quite enough speed to cover the receiver. Boston College employs about 25, 26 formations, and they use a lot of players. They give you a lot of thinking problems on defense. And they do all kinds of things. Chuck now, Flutie didn't like what he saw, Kurt, so he took a timeout. They're so close to being able to put some points on the board, he didn't want to waste a play. So he goes over there now to talk to Jack Signal, the head coach. Our first time out. We have 13 minutes to go in the first period. Boston College is threatening to score. Notre Dame nothing. Boston College nothing. The Boston College Eagles have a 49-yard drive going. They took the opening kickoff, started on their 37. They're now in the Notre Dame 14 with a first down, lining up in their eye formation. Stratford and Beestick are the backs in the eye. De Quinto is in motion. Stratford slips and goes down, and he stops at the 13-yard line of Notre Dame. And a little bit of indication that this field may be slippery tonight, bud. Well, it's cold enough that uh, the moisture is going to freeze very quickly that's on top of the field and the moisture resulted from the tarpaulin being there and then being removed and as it freezes it will get slicker make it difficult for the receivers and particularly difficult for the men who have got to cover the receivers. Brian Brennan was out he's back in again Ian Quintos to the left Notre Dame is not blitzed yet uh, I expect they will one of these down soon well, they're trying to play a contained defense Stratford is in the slot now he comes over in motion Flutie, good protection again, fires, and it is no good. Hit the hands of Stratford at the three-yard line. He couldn't hold on to it. Notice the receivers wearing gloves. And that was a very fine throw. Stratford feels sick, as you always do when you drop one that could have put you first down or maybe even Verzellet in a touchdown. Third down, nine to go. Boston College on the Notre Dame 17. Brennan spreading to the right. Phelan to the left. A split backfield. Third and nine. Stratford and Beestick are the backs. They try to blitz him. There's a pass, and it is a touchdown. He hit Brian Brennan for the score. 12.07 to go in the first period. Brian Brennan has just come up with his ninth touchdown catch of the year time Boston College record receiver. Excellent job of picking up the blitz. You can see number 23 Stratford made the key block on the blitzing safety man. Brennan one-on-one -on -one is able to defeat the Notre Dame cornerback easily. Catches the ball in the end zone for the score. Let's take a look at it from another angle. You can see the Notre Dame cornerback who's got man-on-man he can't quite stay with Brennan as he runs that sharp post pattern to the outside and the ball is right on the numbers. Oh, a great drive engineered by Flutie. 63 yards, the kick is up, and it is no good. Boston College, this may be their weakness here, their place-kicking game. They missed quite a few extra points this year, and their field goal percentage was not very good. And their coach, Big Dell, said, I do a lousy job of coaching kickers. All right, we're going to be back here. There's 12.07 to go in the first period. Boston College has struck the first time in their possession, and the score, Boston College 6, Notre Dame nothing. On the far side, he's had a bad ankle. He's just returning to action. And Miller, a freshman flanker, is on the near side. And kicking off will be Brian Waldron. He can drive it deep. Kicking against the slight wind. It's going to the far side. The bell fumbles the ball on the eight. They're in trouble. And he 
is slammed down on his 13-yard line. Gary Foss was telling Bud and me today that they've had poor field position all season long. They just can't get good field position. Here's the Notre Dame backfield. There's the senior quarterback, Blair Keel. He'll be starting. 6'1", 206-pound senior. Hit 55% of his passes during the regular season. And this is Chris Smith, the fullback. He's a big man, 6'2", 231 pounds, averaging 5.5 yards a carry. And the key to the offense, Pinkett, their tailback, averaging 5.5 yards, rushing the football. D.C. knows it must stop Pinkett, number 20 tonight, to have a chance to win this game. There he is with the ball. He's out to the 17. He's hit by Ted Gaffney, the right linebacker, 57. Pink has had an amazing year. We'll be talking about him in a minute. Here are the Notre Dame receivers coming up. There's the tight end, Bud Mark Barrel. And he's a big one, 6'4", 246 pounds. Fine receiver, fine blocker. And Jackson is their wide receiver. He's had 23 receptions, 19-yard average, 181 pounds, 6 feet tall. The other wide receiver, Howard, smaller man, 5'9", 171 pounds, but very fast. Notre Dame runs out of the eye most of the time. Second and six. Heel on the rollout. The flip. It is incomplete at the 25-yard line. And the pass was intended for the tight end, Vivero. Now here's the offensive line. And Schreiner, the tackles, 269 pounds, 6 feet 8, a senior. Perino, the other tackle, 6'5", 271 pounds. This is a very tall offensive line. At one guard, Scannell, who is 604, 270 pounds. Mawney is the other guard. He, too, is a big man, 6'5", 278 pounds, and a senior. And the center, an Irishman, Mike Kelly, 6'5", 269. Third down six, Notre Dame on their 17, trailing 6-0 early in the first period. Blasting through, it looks like a first down over the 30, out to the 35 is the fullback, Chris Smith. And uh, they plan to run their fullback more in this game than they have this season. The fullbacks have been mostly blockers, so that's a good third down play for Notre Dame. Just a straight-ahead handoff to Smith and straight ahead blocking. You can see them just pick everybody off. They had a little stunt on. The linebacker moved to the outside. Smith cut back away from that. Almost broke it and is tackled by Thurman. Notre, Notre Dame, Dame, as you said, Kurt, Notre Dame plans to run the fullback more. Also, they'll use more motion tonight than they have during the regular season. They had very little motion during their season. They're in the eye. First down in their 35. BC leading 6-0. 10.50 to go in the first period. There's a fake is deep and he's out there and it is batted away at the 25. Bill Jackson the receiver and Ratajkowski number 15 flicked it away from him. Ratajkowski is the fastest man in the Boston College secondary which is a veteran secondary and a very solid one. And the pros think that Ratajkowski is the best prospect on the Boston College team defensively. It's a senior secondary for the cornerman and the strong and free safety. Time out on the officials. You notice the quarterback, Keel, when he went back in the huddle, was looking at a playlist taped onto uh, his left wrist. You can see it there underneath his left uh, forearm. That reminds me of the time that uh, the Colts played Green Bay and they got down to Tom Matty, who had to go in. Uh, Unitas was out, so they're all gone, and Matty put all the numbers on his arm, uh, taped them on, and that's the only way he could call the plays in the game. Hit a second down 10, Notre Dame on their 35, trailing 6 nothing. Field keeps the ball to Jackson at the 40, Jackson to the 45, Jackson's out on the 48-yard line. Ratajkowski and Dave Pereira drove him out, and it's a Notre Dame first down, and now to Dave Dials. Uh, Kurt, not very good news on our first report. It's so cold here that a gentleman fan over in Section 5 has suffered a full cardiac arrest. Many of our fans here have seen the emergency vehicle that just left here, and so we'll await further word on that. All right, Dave, we have a flag drop. We have a face mask at the end of the play. So this will move Notre Dame into Boston College territory. And you can see the face mask. That's number 15, uh, Ratajkowski, who got his hand on the mask. And that rarely is a planned situation by a man making the defensive play. You're going for the ball carrier, and sometimes you just inadvertently get the face mask. 
first down. Boston College marched 63 yards for a score. Flutie passing to Brennan. It was Flutie's passing that led him downfield. Notre Dame's now come back, and they're in D.C. territory for their first time. They'll be on the Boston College 47 with a first down. They're in the I formation. Pinkett is the tailback. There goes Jackson in motion. They give it to Pinkett. Pinkett hit. Shows up. Look at that balance he has. That's why he's great. He's to the 40, still going into the 38. He had nine 100-yard games this year, an all-time Notre Dame record. And he is good inside and outside. He's hard to knock off his feet. He has excellent balance. And so far, the field hasn't bothered him at all. Let's count the number of Boston College men have a shot at him. That's one. Here's two that have had a hand on him and missed him. Then he makes a great move to the outside. Has got enough speed to break that tackle. Then moves back inside before Ratajkowski makes the tackle. We have second down, a yard to go. Notre Dame moving. They're on the Boston College 38. Boston College is ahead 6-0. They're in the split backfield, a wide split. This is something new for them. They haven't used this much this year. Give it right back to Pinkett. Pinkett is stopped at the 37. Let's take a look at the Boston College defense right now. They play a five-man front. That's Paul Shaw, one of the defensive ends, 6'2", 230-pound senior. Harrington is the tackle. He's 6'2", 256 pounds. Middle guard, he think, they think he's the best player on the team defensively. Ruth, he weighs 254 pounds. Swanky is the other defensive tackle. And the outside linebacker is Lubashir, 6'2", 220-pound senior. And they're measuring for this first down. Notre Dame has it on the Boston College 37. So Notre Dame has moved from its 13 to the Boston College, 37, first down. The score, 6-0, Boston College, 9.28 to go in the first period. Pinkett now has carried the ball three times for 14 yards. Both tailbacks have excellent averages this year. Pinkett has averaged 5.6 yards a carry. is a fullback this time over his left guard squirming over the 35 to the BC 34 Rob Swanky and Mike Ruth made the stop now the three uh, the two linebackers and one of them is a great one and there he is uh, Yossi leading tackler on the team 79 unassisted 32 assisted tackles total of 111 6'2 238 pound junior and Gaffney the other linebacker 6'2 25 pound sophomore they're both quick they both got excellent ability to cover the field speed Second down eight, Notre Dame on the Boston College 35. Blair Keel with a split backfield. Notre Dame. Uh, they, uh, they, they sit on the ball a long time. They nearly run their time out every play. That time uh, he was trying to audible, I think, Bud, and it, uh, he didn't like it. And so they've taken a timeout the way Flutie did earlier. So each team has two timeouts left here in this first half. The clock shows 8.27 to play in the first period. The score is Boston College 6, Notre Dame nothing. Your host here tonight, Memphis, Tennessee, temperature 11 degrees. But both teams are re re performing very well here in this bitter cold. Very few errors so far. Second down, 8. Notre Dame on the Boston College, 34 and a half. Big drop back by Keel. Is uh, a bad one. It's low out in the right flat, intended for Pinkett, who also leads the Notre Dame team in pass receiving. Let's take a look at that defensive secondary. And the strong safety is Dave Pereira, 5'10, 204 pound junior. The weak safety, Tony Thurman, who's supposed to be, in the opinion of the coaches, the best player in the defensive secondary. Radachowski is the left cornerback. He's had four interceptions this year, 188 pound senior. And Todd Russell, the right cornerback, who's had three interceptions. He's 6'1, 178 pounds. Third down, eight. We have a penalty coming up. They're talking to Keel. They've had only one penalty so far. That's a face mask against Boston College. Here's another one against them. This moves the ball to the BC 30. Offside, defense. We fix it down. That was a big penalty, Kurt. Uh, it was going to be third down and eight, and it's now third down and three. 
second down. Second Sorry. down, three. Second, three. High formation. The tailback is Alan Pinkett. Chris Smith is the fullback. Second and three. Pinkett has the ball. He escapes. Gets the first down and more. He slammed down to the DC 20. Hit there by the safety man, David Sierra. And again, he snaked away from two or three Boston College players who are bouncing off him. Can't seem to hold him. I think the footing has got a little bit to do with it, but not that much. I think Pickett is just a very elusive ball carrier. You can see the very solid blocks by the Notre Dame forward wall, and then the spinning, turning Pickett, driving for the first down, and Herrera making the tackle. Well, he now has six-yard average in this game, four carries, 24 yards. Joe Paterno says he reminds him very much of Tony Dorsett on the small side, but explosive and hard to knock off his feet. First down, Notre Dame, Boston College 20, Pinkett on a reverse. Sending around is Alvin Miller, the freshman flanker. He's inside the 15 and down to the 13-yard line. So Notre Dame coming up with trickery. They like these flanker reverses. The reverse at this point when you're driving, it appears to be a dangerous play, but the Boston College defense was starting to presume, pursue very, very rapidly, and when you are moving rapidly with the flow of the play, the uh, reverse is always open, and you can see the pursuit moving to the left side of your screen. They see the reverse coming, and the linemen now of Notre Dame have moved down, got blocking position, and do an excellent job of picking up the secondary people of Boston College. Second down three on this long Notre Dame drive. They're on the Boston College 13. They hand it to Pinkett. Pinkett slashing away to the 10 and uh, is stopped there. Maybe just inside the 10. Ratajkowski, the left cornerback, had to get him there and with some help by uh, Tony Thurman. They look to the sidelines now and we should get a measurement. Let's see. On almost every down, Kurt, uh, Boston College gets set in one defensive alignment, and then while Notre Dame is taking that long starting count, they change their defensive alignment to change the blocking assignments of the Notre Dame offensive line, but thus far, it hasn't bothered them a bit. Notre Dame has a first and goal to go. Just inside Boston College's 10-yard line. Six to nothing, Boston College. Notre Dame with a scoring threat. Pullback. Smith, he's hit on the eight forward to the seven. Chris Smith of Cincinnati, Ohio. Steve Diossi. The all-east linebacker of Boston College made the stop on the seven at second down, seven a goal for a Notre Dame touchdown. Remember, they started this drive on their 13. And the Boston College defensive coach signaling in the defensive pattern that he wants to use, the alignment and then the stunts. You know, Notre Dame was ninth in the nation total offense, 14th total defense, and still won six and lost five. Jerry Fossett, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Second down, seven to go for a Notre Dame touchdown on the BC-7. Pinkett to the 10, to the 5, and the little guy goes to the 4. He has power. He's 5'9", weighs 184, very strong thighs and upper body. That was a great defensive play by Pereira. He had an open field tackle against Pinkett, and rarely does one man nail him that cleanly. Third down, four for a Notre Dame touchdown. Boston College ahead. They went 63 yards as Flutie hit three out of five, threw 17 yards to Brennan for the score, and now Notre Dame has come pounding right back down the field. Split backfield. This is a third down play. They try to draw, and he's at the goal line. I don't believe he's over. That's Chris Smith, the fullback, and he's seeing a lot of action here with the ball in the first period. Excellent time to run the draw play. Third down long, the defense was thinking pass, and they rushed the pass hard. That sets it up for the draw. He's very close to the touchdown. One half yard away, Chris Smith just failed to go over. Gaffney stopped him there, and now it's fourth down and a half yard to go. Alvin Miller is out, and Brian Bamer, the second string tight end, comes in for more blocking power. Pinkett is the tailback. You notice they have three backs there. They have the offset back for blocking. Fourth and a half yard for a score. Pinkett dives and he's got it. Alan Pinkett's over and he has just scored his uh, 19th touchdown. He set an all-time record for Notre Dame this year with 110 points in the regular season. He had 18 touchdowns and a two-pointer. 
And now that's his 19th touchdown. Watch Very him. fine line takeoff, as you can see. They're driving low. Then Pinkett has room to come up over the top, and he's got enough spring in his legs to put him up in there. As we take another look at it from a different angle, you can see how they're cut down the defensive lineman and how high he comes up and over to score. Pinkett scored with 4.24 to go in the first period. Johnston, Mike Johnston for the point. He's missed only one this year, and his kick is up, and the kick is good, and Notre Dame has the lead. They had an 87-yard drive. There's Pinkett. Is he all right? 87-yard drive, a time-consuming drive. It took 16 plays, a coach's dream. We'll be back to score Notre Dame 7 and Boston College 6. Jack Bicknell, Cowboy Jack, they call him down here. Uh, I didn't know it. He likes Western music. I said, how far west you been? He said, the farthest is College Station, Texas. I said, well, I got to take you out to Wyoming sometime. But he loves Western music and brought his guitar. And he's sort of been a hit around here. He's a very likable man, isn't he, bud? And an excellent football coach. Uh, he signals the formation. They play from 26 or 27 different offensive formations, and then they have a substitute player come in to call the play. Again, it's Tyrone Taylor and Ken Bell, the deep man. Bell on the far side, away from you. Taylor the closest. And Hardy will kick off with a slight breeze at his back. That drive at Notre Dame, by the way, took seven minutes and 43 seconds. And they had the ball nearly half of the first period in that drive. All right, the kick is a low one. We'll be bounding around. And it's fielded on the five by Taylor. He's up to the 10. It's up to the 18, and that's it. The objective of the kickoff team to hold your opponents within the 20 yard line, and you've done your job. And of course, the bouncing ball, skittering around the turf, gave the defensive coverage a chance to really get downfield before Boston College could organize a return. All right, the last time they had the ball, Flutie took them quickly in the score, hitting three out of five, passing to Brennan for the score. It's Flutie, Stratford, Beastick, Phelan, Brennan. Gieselman in the skilled position. Salem in motion. Flutie out of the pocket. Short pass to the 24, the 25. Stratford came out of the backfield and reaches the 25 of Boston College. Hit by John Oxley, the tackle who trailed the play. On the previous drive, uh, Stratford uh, dropped the ball. He almost trips here over his center, Vesser. But he does get back, gets his balance. He's a great athlete, drills the ball. Stratford on a little curl pattern out of the backfield. Flag down. Boston College committed uh, two penalties in that Notre Dame drive that hurt Boston College. They would have had a third and seven. An offside by BC gave Notre Dame a second and three, enabled them to continue the drive. Apparently it's against Notre Dame. No, it's not. It's against Boston College on a big one. So that's the third penalty against BC, none against Notre Dame. Holding. Offense. First down. There's the scoring drive, as we already told you. Ball's on the nine-yard line now of BC. First and 20. By the way, the second string center, Bob Vissers, has been there. The first string center, Jack McNell, the son of the coach, has a bad toe, hurt in practice. They're worried about that on the exchange. That passes to Brennan, and it's a little behind him, and fired hard in this frigid night air, and it's incomplete. Naylor was covering. So it is second down and 20. Boston College in back to their nine-yard line. What about the second string center who hasn't snapped a lot this year on the exchange with the quarterback, bud? Well, he's a four-year letterman, so that gives you a little more confidence than you normally have, but you always hate to lose your starter. Jack McNell said, uh, not worried about him being my son. I'm worried about him being our center. Yeah, center. <laughs> He'll be in there for the long snaps on punts and field goals. Second down 20, Boston College on their nine. Notre Dame's ahead, seven to six, first period. Who leads Notre Dame in tackles? 
tackling, made the stop on him. And I think this penalty's against, that's Stratford, this penalty's against the Boston College also. Notre sure. Dame was supposed to come into this game maybe a little over anxious and tight. It's been the other way around. They've played almost to state free football. Boston College now is into its fourth penalty of the first period. And the penalty was for clipping. I would assume that uh, Notre Dame would refuse the penalty. Decline. I think it was Beastick. Notre Dame declines the penalty. So they'll lose the down. It'll be third down and 20. Boston College. yard line now back in the seventh that's where he ran out it's third down and 22 lone setback slot left slot right now Stratford's in motion trying to spread him out the handoff not going too far that's B stick to fullback good power runner up the middle couple of touchdowns against Alabama he just short of the 15 Tony Perganic and Chris Brown teamed up for the tackle. There goes Beastick out, and it's a punt formation now for Boston College. Quickly to Dave Dial. You know, it isn't often I hear a thrilling speech, Kurt. You and I and Bud have sat in on so many, but yesterday, terrific speech by former Treasury Secretary Simon at the luncheon here at the Liberty Bowl. I wish we had time for you to give it all, but all of us were stirred by that speech about patriotism. Oh, aren't you nice? And, uh, this is the year to talk about it, too, because we're going to have an Olympic Games in Los Angeles in 84. They're going to make all Americans proud. Well, you're heading up the Olympic Committee. I got the feeling in Lake Placid a few weeks ago when we had the, the first of the six. Boston College punted a short punt of 32 yards. Notre Dame has the ball right back in B.C. territory at the B.C. 47. With a split backfield. Still Pinkett and Smith. Passes to the fullback Smith to the 45. And he goes to the 40. Notre Dame moving on the ground against Boston College. Seven-yard seven pickup. They're taking very big splits, uh, Kurt, in their offensive line. That's forced Boston College to widen their men. Their linebackers are playing about four or five yards deep, and they're not getting quick enough support against the run. We have a flag down. This is against Notre Dame. I believe it's holding. Kind of in the same pattern. Both teams scored the first time they have the ball, and both teams get reset by penalties the second time they've had the ball. And a complete different style of drives. A quick passing drive downfield by Boston College, and then slugging away back a long one by Notre Dame. Holding, 10-yard penalty, offense, the is down. That's the first penalty against first Notre down. Dame. Don't think it's Coles. 11 degrees, maybe even lower now as the night goes on. Notre Dame on its 44-yard line. First down, 20. They're ahead, 7 to 6. 2.45 to go in the first period. Pickett and Smith in the I formation. Blair Keel off to Pinkett. They jam him that time at the 45. Coming up to hit him, Mike Ruth, who bench presses 535 pounds. Boston College thinks he's the best nose guard in the country. He's only a sophomore, and he's going to be a priest. He had some help from Rob Swanky, the right tackle. It'll be second down now, 19 for Notre Dame. Ruth has got great strength, and he's built compactly for a football player. Not too tall, 254 pounds, and strong. Joe Howard spreads to the left. by Mike Ruth. Chris Smith recovered the fumble. The very, fullback very alertly. Very unusual to be uh, rushed that hard to, on a rollout or sprint out pass, but it gives you some idea of the speed that Ruth possesses from the nose guard position. Third down and 27 for Notre Dame. On their own 37-yard line. They're approaching one minute to play in the first period. The Irish are ahead 7-6. 
Again, the split backfield, which has been effective in the running game for him. He hands it off to uh, Smith. Smith with the 42. Smith carried the ball only 70-some times all year. He must have seven or eight carries alone here in his first period. Made 77 carries during the regular season, but he averaged five and a half yards per try, so he's been an effective ball carrier. Now the quarterback is the punter, Blair Keel. Keel has averaged uh, just over 40 yards a kick, 40.6. And we may get a very strong rush here. There's only one safety man back for Boston College. They're ready to go with eight men along, nine men along the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, 23. Brennan is the safety man. The All-American wide receiver. A high snap. They did get the rush. They knocked him down. No flag, though. No flag down. And the ball rolling around is dead at the 26. They just avoided running into it. They had a strong rush as Bud Wilkinson called. So Boston College will take over on its own 26-yard line. And uh, they gain 19 yards on the exchange of kicks. Ball right here. Ball. 11 seconds to go in the first period. BC's ball on their 26. And they do believe that they can block a punt before this game is over. Notre Dame hasn't had a punt blocked all year. Lone setback. He can fire hard. He can feather it to you. He can make you run under the ball. If there's uh, any improvement in him, the coaches say it's his technical knowledge of the game. We try to coach him hard before the snap, Jack Bidnell says. Once the ball is snapped, it's like trying to mess up a, a, a Ted Williams, a good hitter. Leave him alone. He is just a natural. There's a great instinct to play the game. All we can do is mess him up, telling him what to do after the ball is snapped. Second down, 10. Boston College on his 26. This will be the last play of the first period. And they're going to run it off tackle. They go to the 30, and there they're stopped. That is uh, Jim Brown, the fullback. Time has run out for the first period in the 25th annual Liberty Bowl game here in Memphis, Tennessee. And the score at the end of the first quarter, Notre Dame 7 and Boston College 6. The Golic name becoming famous at Notre Dame, but Greg, heck of a way to end your career with an injury two days before Christmas. Right, right, Ted. I, I tore a ligament in my knee. All right, there's some talk that maybe Notre Dame wasn't up for this game. You've been on the bench with your teammates. The attitude of the Fighting Iron. We're up for it. This game's like a national championship game for us. We're ready. Okay, Kurt. Start of the second quarter. Third down, six. Boston College on their 30. Notre Dame ahead in this game, seven to six. In motion, Stratford, the quick toss out, is intercepted by Notre Dame. Intercepted at the 37, that's for Janik, who has number 58, who doubles the tackles by the rest of his teammates. And it was a bad toss by Flutie right into his hands over the middle. Flutie was rushed on the play, as you can see. A little bit of a stunt there. Number 92 getting pressure on him. He was slipping as he delivered the ball, but Pajanic made a very fine move in front of the receiver, reached high, and was able to hang on to the ball. That's the first turnover in this game. Remarkable with 10 degree temperature. Notre Dame's on the Boston College 34. Steve Diossi made the initial hit on him. Pink is just a sophomore. He's got two more years left. There's only been three 1,000-yard rushers of the season in Notre Dame history. Vegas Ferguson holds the all-time record. Al Hunter and now Pinkett. But Pinkett has two more years to go after this. Notre Dame has had excellent field position the last two times they had the ball. The 47-yard line of Boston College and now the 34. Second down, four for Notre Dame on the BC 28. Brooks is in the game. Brooks has the ball and there's a flag drop. Goes to the 25. And where the position the flag came from, it's almost certainly a holding penalty. Mark Brooks played for Jerry Faust, Bowler High School with Faust had that remarkable record, undefeated season after undefeated season. 
And that record uh, induced Notre Dame to hire him to come as head coach. That's a holding uh, penalty. We'll see if we can spot it, bud. See that number 63, the nose. Center Kelly, just a little bit of a hand on the jersey and a very solid lock on the jersey. And the umpire behind the line saw it very, very quickly. And holding uh, Mike Ruth, he's so strong, that's the only way you can stop him. Well, he's a good man. <laughs> he's been in an awful lot of plays, but it was a tough, tough penalty for Notre Dame. Holding, 10 yard penalty, offense, repeat second down. Ball's on the Boston College 36. It is second down 12 for Notre Dame. They're ahead seven to six. We just opened the second quarter in Memphis, Tennessee. Blair Keel, great drop back pattern. Fires away to the sideline. That's grabbed off by Boston College. For the out of bounds, that was George Ratajkowski against the sideline and his Boston College ball. And the first turnover was intended for Mike Favorite, number 83. Ratajkowski steps in front of him, pinned against the sideline, and picks it off. Very good timing by Ratajkowski on the play. Keel is not rushed. Has plenty of time to deliver the ball, but it's just an excellent defensive play. Ratajkowski moving in front of the receiver to make the reception before stepping out of bounds. Now Boston College has the ball on their own 22-yard line. Each team now has one turnover. 7-6 Notre Dame. BC's in the eye. The handoff, the tailback, Troy Stratford, and he's knocked down for a yard loss. Notre Dame's fired up right now. They've outplayed Boston College since the early minutes of the game. In fact, BC can't get its offense on track, but why? They're just not getting control of the line of scrimmage, and Notre Dame has done a good job of putting the pressure on Flutie. He has not had quite time enough to deliver the ball, and I think his footing is a little unsure. As he drops back, he doesn't look as though he's confident that he's going to be able to have great body control. Flutie's hit 51% of his passes this year, 17 touchdowns. Now they're moving the ball. They put Gesselman, the tight end, on the other side. Second down, 12, BC from their 20. He has a protection. The pass is incomplete, right through the arms of 83, the tight end, Scott Gieselman, and you don't see him do that very often. Once the ball gets to him, he catches him in a crowd, and he usually has sure hands. Now, the reason they're moving it from side to side, uh, Notre Dame has a defense where they try to have one man on the rush side, one man on the contain side, and they would like to have the tight end going against Naylor, who usually is off the line of scrimmage on the split end side, where he does not have to protect himself against a tight end block. Beastrick back in at fullback, number 40. Brennan comes back at his wide receiver. Third and 12, BC cannot move the ball now against Notre Dame. They did on their opening drive. They've been stopped cold since. Thalen's in motion. Flutie throws, and it's tipped and inter nearly intercepted, not quite by Notre Dame. That's number 49. That's the freshman, Mike Kovaleski, who started his very first game against Purdue as a freshman for Newcastle, Indiana. And so Boston College has to punt. Fourth down, 12. They've had three possessions now without a single first down. Right. And Notre Dame's going to put the pressure on the kicker. They have 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Now they've got one more dropping back. Nine-man rush. And the kick is blocked, and Notre Dame recovers it. It's on the five-yard line of Boston College. They had the big rush. They had four men pouring in there. He just didn't have a chance to get it away. I think blocking it was Mike Golick, voted the most valuable defensive player this year for Notre Dame. And you can see the snap went through his hands into his body, which delayed him getting rid of the ball. And the Notre Dame rush was effective enough with a short delay on the kick. Golick blocking the punt. Notre Dame recovers on the six-yard line. They give it to him on the six. Notre Dame already ahead, seven to six. They're fired up down there. They were the underdog. There's Golick. Their defensive right end. First and six to go. Who do you give it to? Of course, Pinkett. Pinkett cuts back and goes to the four. Alan Pinkett. Steve Diossi nailed it at the four-yard line. Second and four for a Notre Dame touchdown. 12.30 to go in the first half. It's been all Notre Dame since the opening five minutes of the game. Jack McNell, jump 
open in that gum, he has to be concerned right now. You can't be any more concerned than that. That's right. The worst mistake in football is block punt. Little offensive yards in the first period, 75 for Notre Dame, 72. Boston College, most of Notre Dame's on the run. This is a second and four play for a touchdown. Peel. Throws. Incomplete at the four yard line. He's having trouble on that rollout. He was trying to hit number 82, the tight end, Mark Bavero. And he also got a lot of pressure on that one. Pereira coming in with a strong safety rush. To put the pressure on him. He didn't really have time to deliver the ball properly. By the way, the Bavero is a Danvers, Massachusetts boy playing against Boston College. Third down, four to go for a Notre Dame touchdown. Their running has been much more impressive than their passing tonight. In passing, they've had only one out of six complete 14 yards. Out of the eye, Pinkett takes the toss, and he is over. He just slipped through a little crease, but a flag is down. They've got a flag down. That's what Pinkett really does, like all the great backs, finds one little crack or one little opening and slithers through. And what they all have, too, Kurt, is the ability to accelerate when they see that little bit of opening and almost double their speed. Wiped back, wiped out, flag dropped, and a Notre Dame touchdown is called back. And Jerry Faust, of course, naturally upset. the blackboards at BC and their workouts. Stop Pinkett. Stop Pinkett. You win this game. If you don't stop him, we may not. Holding 10 yards penalty. Offense. Defeat third down. Puts the ball back on the 14-yard line of Boston College. Makes it third and 14 for a Notre Dame touchdown. Now Pinkett's going to be very tough to stop. He had a over 200-yard game against Penn State. 217 yards. The next game, 197 against the Air Force. Two best games back-to-back -back by a Notre Dame runner in their history. That's nearly four, well, it is over 400 yards these last two games of the season. Peel on the toss. It's a touchdown. He hits Alvin Miller, the freshman from Kirkwood, Missouri. The score, and Notre Dame now leads 13-6. Miller ran a fine pattern. It's just a slant across the middle. And Keel does a marvelous job of having the ball right on target. Here's Keel dropping back. There's a little bit of a fake, a little misdirection. That gives the slant pattern by Miller a chance to open up. He's in front of the corner back. He's open for the touchdown, and he was hit perfectly on the numbers. He has been coming strong, and uh, Jerry Foss says he'll be a star next year. The sophomore is only a freshman. Mike Johnston to try for the point. The kick is up. The kick is no good. It was blocked that time. Uh, Kurt uh, Swanky broke through cleanly to block the extra point and a very big extra point from the Boston College standpoint since they had missed their first one. Well, each team has missed an extra point. By the way, Miller was the first player that Barry Switzer of Oklahoma tried to recruit in this last freshman class. We're going to be back here. Notre Dame now leads 13-6. Here's the Boston College side of the field. Let's take another uh, angle on the touchdown. He just slanted into the end zone. And the fake of the two backs from the eye formation to the right side of your screen opened up the pattern for the slant by Miller, and he was able to beat the corner man. All right, we have Taylor and Bell as the deep men. Tyrone Taylor, Ken Bell. Carney will boot it. On the near side, Taylor the far side now. Since BC's opening touchdown, they have not been able to move. They have been stopped completely. Here's the kick. Taken on a fumble around, and they go down, and they're in poor field position on their 14. And right now, BC is not playing well. And the kick is not going that uh, deep by Johnston. And the two deep men for Boston College should move up just a little bit closer as we look at the scoring drive. Uh, when you start from the six-yard line, if you're going to score, it doesn't take too many plays. Just four, but they scored twice. They had a holding penalty on a touchdown run by Pinkett, and then they did hit the touchdown pass to Miller. Boston College on their 14. And now they've got to figure out how to unravel this Notre Dame defense that is stopping them. 
down as Moody puts him in the eye formation. He fakes the handoff. Now he's going to scramble. He gets it out of there. They're trying to contain him. They've got him contained. And that's what their job is at 58 for Danny. They're playing a contained defense. They had three ways to go against Flutie, they said. An all-out blitz, blitzing four players, a single blitz, or a contain. Four men rushing, holding their lanes with the wide men staying outside and don't let Flutie get outside. And they're doing it very well, bud. And the time that uh, they hit the touchdown pass, it was an all-out blitz by Notre Dame, and that kind of makes you discouraged about it. Second down, 10. Boston College on their 14. Notre Dame ahead, 13 to 6. 11 minutes to play in the first half. BC goes to its setback loan. Flutie whips a short pass. It's incomplete. Right down the middle. Sails by Brendan Murphy, number 87. And it appears, Kurt, that the receiver's hands being cold are making it uh, more difficult to catch the football. Flutie's throwing the ball quite well, but the receivers are having a difficult time hanging on. There's several that have gone right through their hands. A short range. Flutie's secret, and they ask him what would be the toughest thing in this game tonight. He says, keeping my hands warm. He needs to get his receiver's hands warm. Right. He had a big game against Alabama in terrible weather. Flutie now has had six straight incompletions after hitting three out of five on the opening drive. Notre Dame faked the rush. Four men coming. There's Flutie on the rollout. And his pass is in the bat of the way. A great save there by Nick Rick Naylor, number 37. He just got it with the end of his fingertips. It was intended for Brian Brennan. He made a fine job of staying in his position and not being moved out of position. As you can see, Flutie rolling around, stopped the throw, then moved back outside again. Naylor stayed in his own position of the field, and you can see him coming across, knocking the ball out of the arms of Brennan. Don Mihalik, the punt, he had one blocked the last time. Gets the clean snap. And Vic now, the kick is not too deep. Greg Bell fields it on his 43 to the 45. He's hit and brought down on his 47-yard line. Down there for Notre Dame, for Boston College is number 48 to make the stop. That's mostly a cornerback. We'll be back. Notre Dame has the ball, and they're ahead, 13 to 6. It'll be first down, Notre Dame on its 47-yard line. And after scoring on their first possession, Kurt Boston College has not made a first down on their last four possessions of the football. of the draw play, of course, is what makes it happen. Here's Keel making the fake. And that's Pinkett. You've got to respect Pinkett. He's hit hard. But Keel is absolutely open with plenty of time to throw. He finds Rivero wide open for the first down. Notre Dame now on the Boston College 33. Been all Notre Dame since the opening five minutes. They're ahead. 13 to 6. most of the year, but they've been using him quite a lot as the runner today. David Piera had to uh, tackle him in the secondary. And you can see the fine blocks by Maumee and Perino that opened it up for him. He moved it down the field, and once again, we got a very fine tackle by Thurman coming up to stop him in the open. All right, Notre Dame on the Boston College 21. Playing with extreme confidence now, Notre Dame. They've got a wide split in their line. Over the 15 to Smith again to the 4 
Cliff Sheets. He's hot now, bud. And if you've got a play that's going, keep using that play. It was a straight-ahead handoff, the same play as of the previous down. Great blocks again by Kelly, Monty, and Perino. There's a man that has been under extreme pressure. Gary Faust, he knows it. He said, I, I, I want to win every game. I'm looking forward to next year. I still think we're going to have a great team. It'll be his fourth season. Pinkett by the toss. He's to the 10. And he's out of bounds on the 12. Alan Pinkett from Sterling, Virginia. Taken out by Steve Diossi and Tony Thurman. Take a look at Diossi, the uh, great linebacker for Boston College. You can see him moving to the outside. But Pinkett has got just a little bit more speed. Diossi is able to make the tackle, but not until five yards have been gained on the first down on the play. It is first and goal to go. Notre Dame on the Boston College eight-yard line. They're taking them apart right now, mostly on the ground. The fullback barrels to the three-yard line is Chris Smith of Cincinnati. And he's hit by Steve Diossi again. And that forward wall of Notre Dame's opening gaping holes for the backs. Straight ahead blocking man on man, and they're beating Harrington, they're beating Ruth, and they're beating Swanky. Second down, three to go for a Notre Dame touchdown with 8.43 to go in the half. You can tell Jerry Faust excited. He's going to have that cap down over his ears. They're going to put three backs in there now. Smith and Brooks, two fullbacks. Pinkett is the tailback. This is a second down, three to go for a score. Pinkett has scored his second touchdown of the game. And Notre Dame moves out in front, 19 to 6. A very impressive drive for him. They just shoot away. Seven, eight, nine yards at a clip. The Boston College uh, linebacker's been playing very deep. They're not able to get up quickly enough to support. Pinkett's got a little more speed than Diossi, so he's able to outrun him as he gets that quick opening hole as we watch the blocking Bavero makes an excellent block as you can see also get a great block by Perino the guard pulling makes a fine block maybe a little bit of holding on the play but uh, Pinkett puts it into the end zone and he scored with 8.19 to go in the first half Mike Johnston for the point the kick is up Two tonight. One block. That was so good. And yeah, he was in there to deflect it. Just got it by the hand. But we'll be back here as Boston College will receive the score. Notre Dame 19. Boston College 6. 12 carries 49 yards. Together, as a tandem, they've been effective as Notre Dame has rolled on the ground. Boston College needs some field position, bud. Notre Dame's had bad field position all year, according to Jerry Faust. Uh, they got the ball in the 13-yard line the first time. Then they got it on the Boston College 47, the Boston College 34, the Boston College 6 after the block punt, and the last time in the 47-yard line. So they've had an excellent field position. And BC, in his last two or three possessions, has had poor field position inside of its 15. Kicked by Carney. This is tumbling down, taken by Bell on the 5. He's out to the 10, 15, to the 20. A crack. He goes to the 30 and to the 31. Now they have a little operating room. Iowa Francisco, the second string tailback, made that stop. And we see if Boston College can get their offense generated a little bit. Uh, their previous four possessions, as we noted, they failed to make a single first down. What do you think they have to do, bud? I think they've got to have the receivers hang on to the football. The receivers are open. They're not getting too much pressure on Flutie, but uh, when your receivers aren't hanging on to the football, if you're relying on a pass attack, uh, obviously you're not going to move it. Three for 12 for Flutie. 51% for the season is completion percentage. That man nearly went offside. Flutie held up on the count. Great drop. Look at the time. Now he'll start his scrambling. Out in the open. At the 40 to the 35. That's Beastick, the fullback, and he has a first down at the 27 yard line of Notre Dame. He was wide open out there. And anytime you have a 
back going out of the backfield and goes that deep. Usually a linebacker has got to be on him. See Beastick, just a little bit of a head fake, moving to the outside, and it's the time that Flutie has, of course, that makes this all happen. No pressure on him. He finally finds Beastick open down the sidelines. He's beyond everyone. Must have been playing a man-for-man -man coverage on all of the wide receivers. Ballage comes up to make the tackle, but it's a big, big gain for Boston College. 42 yards in that play. First down, Boston College on the Notre Dame 27. The rollout. Flutie says, get on down there. Throws, and it is no good at the 10-yard line. Gieselman couldn't hold on to it. Went high in the air. Stacy Turan hit him there, number 30, and jarred it loose. He's the left cornerback. Flutie makes a great fake here of the draw. You can see it. Beastick moving to the inside. That let him get out around the corner, and now he said, get down the field further. Get down the field further. I can get the ball to you. And now, tight end gets the ball. He is really popped hard. Very fine defensive play by Torrent. It is second down 10, Boston College on the Notre Dame 27. Notre Dame ahead 19 to 6. 7.47 to go in the first half. Strafford slips and goes down the yard. They stopped in cold today, but he hasn't had the ball too much. Kovaleski, the uh, freshman linebacker, brought him down. Every time Stratford started to accelerate, he slipped tonight in this frozen turf here. Here's Kovaleski coming out. I don't think that he's running with the same degree of confidence that Pickett is. If you're worried about being uh, in a questionable footing situation, it transforms itself to your feet, not having a lot of confidence. This is third down and 11. Boston College on the Notre Dame 28. The pass, the crossing pattern, and it is a touchdown to Gerald Phelan. The junior, Gerard Phelan, scores from Rosemont, Pennsylvania. Great catch. He's averaged over 20 yards a catch this year. They don't go to him nearly as much as to Brennan, but he's very dangerous. He's got excellent speed. He gets down behind him, as you can see the joy on the bench of Boston College, Jack Bicknell. The delivery and the quickness and the accuracy with which Bluty threw the ball is why he is being considered as a possible Heisman Trophy winner next year. They finished third in the trophy uh, Heisman race this year. So he brings them right back. 69 yards they go, and they're going to go for two. They're trailing 19 to 12. They'll try the two-pointer with a lone setback. Rudy will throw for it. He slips, he throws, incomplete. So BC failed to convert after each of their two touchdowns. It was intended for Brian Brennan, and that leaves them seven behind. And I think he'd have hit the pass had Brennan not slipped. See Flutie back, who's seen the entire field, sideline to sideline, but he slips as he gets ready to deliver the football, and he's just enough off balance to overthrow it. Brennan couldn't reach it. Yeah, Brennan was open there if he'd hit him with the pass. We're going to be back as the score now is 19 to 12, Notre Dame. <laughs> Now probably Cowboy Jack feeling a little bit easier. You always do when you come back on a beautiful drive. And as we look at the pass by Flutie, the way it looked to the Notre Dame secondary, how did he get behind all of us? And Phelan did for the score. Well, that's the catch of the game so far by Gerard Phelan. And now kicking off. Ryan Waldron. A freshman. Jefferson's in the middle. Alonzo Jefferson, Alvin Miller, Greg Bell with him. And a kick is coming to the little freshman from West Palm Beach, Florida, to the 10. He gets up to the 20, and he's filled and knocked down there on the 20-yard line. And the tackle is by Dan Abraham. It'll be first down, Notre Dame. This is Abraham going downfield. You can see the speed that he has and the desire that he has. He settles down into a good tackling position here, getting his balance, and now he's ready to move in and make the tackle. Didn't get his arms around, but knocked the ball carrier down cleanly as Smith failed to get past him. Blair Keel brings him up. He still has Chris Smith at fullback, 32, Pink at the tailback, number 20. They've been dandies here in the first half for Notre Dame. He fakes to Pinkett. He throws it out short to the 25. 
to the 29-yard line is the tight end Mark Bavaro. Very good ball handling by the quarterback that time. A clever fake by Keel, and he had Boston College fooled momentarily in their secondary. Well, anytime Pickett comes over the ball, you've got to respect it. Keel did a good job of moving back to the outside. Found his tight end, Bavaro, wide open, breaking to the outside. And they pick up just about nine yards, almost a first down. They have second down and a half yard to go for the first down. 6.48 to play in the first half, 19 to 12, Notre Dame. Pink at the tailback, he has the first down. Look at him, he broke two tackles and he's down on the 33 yard line. It's amazing the way he ripped tackles for his side. At 184, five feet nine, number 20 there. Pink it. He's fifth in the nation in rushing this year, averaging 126.7 yards a game. First down, Notre Dame on their 33. along the line of scrimmage. Scott Harrington, the left tackle of BC, tripped him up. Maybe he got a yard. No, right along the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down, 10 for Notre Dame. And uh, we have a flag down. Nope, no flag. He waves it off. Second down, 10. Backfield again. See, they sit over that ball a long time. There's a straight handoff and Pinkett is tumbled at the 35. Right now, the day dial. Rich Smythe and Brian Staub love their Eagles, drove 24 hours to get here. What has this team done uh, for the school spirit up at uh, BC? Well, we wouldn't have drove 24 hours if we'd done something. <laughs> no, I tell my brother, who's an ND grad back at home, we're down now at BC 7, but we're going to come back and win this one. I'd like to say hello to the boys in the Bronx. Call me. All right, Kurt. Okay. Five minutes to play in the half. It's third and eight for Notre Dame on their 35. Heel on a quickie right over the middle to the tight end again. He breaks away for a first down. read of the rush that time by Keel. We have the blitz on. No linebackers. Rivero saw it on the slant pattern. Keel hit him cleanly. See the blitz coming. Keel simply fades back, keeps his cool, hits Rivero in the crossing pattern. The linebackers have rushed. Keep Rivero wide open. An important third down play for Notre Dame. They keep the ball now. 4.40 to go in the half. First down, Notre Dame on its 48. Smith, think of the quick backfield, jamming over the 50 and plowing to the 45-yard line is Chris Smith. He's run with abandon. He weighs 231, 6'2". And he's been the leading ball carrier in the game. Shouldn't have made much that time. Uh, it was determined running and spinning and leg drive and got in the yardage after he was hit very close to the line of scrimmage. They have a second down and three. The Fighting Irish on the Boston College 45-yard line. Notre Dame 19, Boston College 12. Four minutes to go in the half. They're back to the I formation. And they're back to Pinkett. Pinkett gets outside, but he slams short on the first down of the 44 by Steve Diossi, who reached him, and the second string right in, David Thomas. Diossi has not had speed enough most of the time to move to the outside with Pinkett, but this time no one touches him. He's able to get to the outside as Smith missed the block. Diossi has speed enough to get in on the tackle when Smith did not be able to connect and slow him up. And Thomas really put the final hit on him to seal him away from the first down. It is now third down and three. Notre Dame on the Boston College 45. The I formation. Heel fakes, he's being chased. He'll throw on the run. He gets it out there and it's incomplete at the 27 yard line. And it's uh, to Mark Bavero and he was being defended by Diossi. 
And it ran across the field with him, number 99. And it looked to me like the Aussie might have interfered on the play. Yeah, that was <laughs> very, very close. I thought that flag might drop, but it didn't. Now it's fourth down and three, Notre Dame on the Boston College 45. Notre Dame's had the ball much more in this game than Boston College. When BC scores, they score quick. It's a passing team against a very powerful running team. Blair Keel in punt formation. He's had one kick for 32 yards. Ryan Brennan is the safety man, the wide receiver. He's at the 10-yard line. And uh, Boston College is thinking Keel might run with the football. It's fourth and about three, and he can run and he can throw, and they're capable of any kind of trickery from punt formation with Keel back in the kicking position. Keel actually was doing a better punting job as a starter than when he went to the bench. The freshman Burline replaced him. Now he's back starting tonight. I don't know who could kick in this weather. It's about 10 degrees above zero here in Memphis. And both benches are so involved in the game that they're crowding towards the sidelines. And the officials, between the last play, went to both benches and said, move back, get back behind the restraining line, which is five yards from the sideline. This is a fourth down play, fourth and three, keel and punt formation. He's going to kick. Brennan watches it hit, hop around, and the ball will be killed uh, along the 16, 17-yard line of Boston College. He was just trying to push it down there by the goal line so one of his teammates could fall on it. Very good kick to any time you get it inside the 20, it's better than kicking it into the end zone. It shows spot the ball in the Boston College 17. Again, they have poor field position. They're trailing 19 to 12, 3.30 to go in the half. Normally, you'd say time is a factor here, but with Flutie at the controls, he can make it happen quickly. Little Doug in the pocket. Gets out of the pocket, scrambles away, comes up to the 25. He's to the 30. He's to the 35, to the 40, 45, 50, and out he goes. That's where he can really kill you. They say that... Uh, He's really only about a 4'6 or 4'7 speed man, but uh, Jack McNell says anybody chasing him, he looks like he's 4'5. <laughs> Let's take a look at it again. You can see the slight opening he comes out of. Notre Dame's got good pressure on him. He ducks, gets behind, and then breaks between two Ran men, him. and then takes it to the inside, breaks it back to the outside, and he's got marvelous speed as a safety man barely touched him before he went out of bounds. They put him out on the Notre Dame 46. So that run was good for 37 yards by Doug Flutie. 318 to play in the half. Notre Dame ahead, 19-12. BC goes in their lone setback operation with a slot to the right. And the handoff to that setback comes over the 40, breaks away. Stratford, he's still going, and he's out of bounds on the 29 of Notre Dame. Taken out by Chris Brown, the free safety. Stratford. 810 yards this year, average 5.6. He missed three games with a sprained knee. He scored uh, seven touchdowns. He's just a sophomore, too. He'll be back for the next two years. He's a good one. Very much like uh, Pinkett, 5'8", 182. Boston College on the Notre Dame, 29. First down, Boston College. He stopped the clock to 311. And uh, incomplete pass. His hand had started forward. That was Golik who rushed him right now to Dave Dial. Kurt, there's a guy watching in the hospital right now in South Bend, Gene Faskett, who for more than 30 years was the head trainer at Notre Dame, is ill and cannot be with the team for the first time in more than 30 years. And all the Notre Dame people here want to wish him the very best. Right, Dave. A few, uh, see Johnny Lujak is here, Creighton Miller, former great back at Notre Dame, uh, Frank Trapuca, Heisman Trophy winner, Angelo Bertelli, Moose Krause, on hand to root for the Irish, second down 10. Flutie, right back again, gets it to Stratford at the 30, Stratford is hit at the 29, and we have a flag down. The flag is dropped, 2.57 to go in the half. And it was dropped to the Boston College backfield. 
Didn't see any movement back there. We'll get the signal from the official shortly. Kovaleski made that hit. That's holding against Boston College. Watch this hit, bud. Stratford starts up the field, and you can't make a better tackle than that. Just straight on, enough power to absolutely stop the ball carrier cold. Kovaleski making the play. How about an 18-year-old kid starting his very first game? Which he did last September. Right out of high school. He doesn't really look like a freshman. Oh. <laughs> the score, 19 to 12. Notre Dame, 2.57 to play in the first half. And they put the ball back on the 37-yard line of Notre Dame. It'll be... Penalty, offense, you're in the pass. Your feet down. Second down, 20. Good penalty. 39, they, they spotted where they should have back in the 39. Second down, 20. Boston College on the 39 of Notre Dame. Stratford in motion. Rudy whips it out, and it is no good. He was trying to get it to Gerard Phelan at the 20-yard line, but he couldn't reach it. One of the few uh, badly directed passes that uh, <coughs> Flutie has thrown. The two wide receivers are breaking down the field. That's Phelan breaking into the middle, and Brennan breaking on the left side of your screen, and one of the few bad throws that Flutie has made all evening. <coughs> It'll be third down, 20. Six seconds to go in the first half. It's on the Notre Dame 39 yard line. That's Phelan in motion. Now he's going deep, deep, deep. He's got him. And he just missed him in the end zone. Chris Trapuca, the son of the old Notre Dame quarterback, Frank Trapuca, whose brother Kelly is now starring with the Detroit Pistons and was a Notre Dame All American basketball player. What an athletic family the Trapucas are. He was out there, bud. Yes, Brennan uh, has beaten the secondary. You can see him starting downfield. He doesn't have, or Trapuca rather, doesn't have great speed, but they don't cover him. He just let him go right down the field. He's at the flag pattern, and he has the ball thrown about three steps beyond his reach. Could have been open for a touchdown. The Haley can punt formation, boots the ball over the end zone. It's a touchback, and Notre Dame will come out with a first down in his 20-yard line. With two and a half minutes to go in the half. And the score, Notre Dame 19, Boston College 12. He joined us late. BC took the opening kickoff, quickly went 63 yards for a score. Flutie hit Brennan 17 yards for the touchdown on the pass. Then Notre Dame came back with a grinding march of 87 yards in 16 plays. Pinkett went over a half yard out. Notre Dame blocked a punt, scored on a 14-yard pass, and then another drive by Notre Dame, and Pinkett scored his second touchdown. And a pass. That's uh, Pinkett again, getting through those cracks inside the tackles. Steve Diossi hit him in the secondary. Very fortunate thing for Boston College. They have Diossi. He's been the key defensive player against the run all evening. On the 26-yard line of Notre Dame, it'll be second down four. We have two minutes to play in the half. 19-12, Notre Dame. And the left tackle moved for Notre Dame. Tried to scramble back, but couldn't get back. That drew a Boston College man. Looked like Ray Norton. They flipped the lineman, sometimes right or left. Let's see. That's a legal procedure against Notre Dame. are beginning to mount up. That's the fourth penalty against Notre Dame. Boston College has had five penalties. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. Offense. That puts the ball in the 21-yard line of Notre Dame. Second down, nine. Second and nine. Just under two minutes to play in the half. Of 
the sideline. A high pass sailed over the head of Milt Jackson, the flanker, Fairfield, Iowa. Incomplete in his third and nine. The pass, incomplete pass, stops the clock in favor of BC now with a minute 54 to go in the first half. The Boston College defense continues to jump, but Notre Dame is so deliberate at the line of scrimmage that they make the jump, and the offensive linemen still have plenty of time to read the new defensive alignment and adjust their blocking assignments. Third and nine for the Fighting Irish from their 21. scrimmage and dropped at the 17. Mike Ruth and Scott Harrington, the nose guard and the left tackle were in there. And now it's punt formation. BC still has a shot of the ball. And, uh, I'm sure that Bicknell would like to have a timeout. They call it. They've got it. They stop the clock with a minute 34 to go. BC has now one timeout left in the half. Says, boys, if we're going to get style, let's get one quick. Well, they lost about seven seconds, and uh, in the dying moments, that can be very important time. So Boston College is uh, timeout, and uh, when we resume play, Notre Dame has the ball on their 17-yard line, fourth and long, and they're going to punt it away. Blair Keel. This crowd huddles in the 10 degree above zero temperature. It appears this time that Boston College will try to block the punt. They have only one man back. That's Brennan. Ten men ready to go. Notre Dame has blocked the punt in the game, and that led to their second touchdown. Notre Dame trying to call off which man each one of us will block. There they go. He gets the kick away. He's knocked down. This is a costly penalty for BC. Down, it's roughing the kicker. That's Kevin Sullivan who ran into him. Kevin Sullivan. I think on the first kick, uh, the referee ruled that they were blocked into Keel. But uh, if you don't get a piece of the ball and you're not blocked into him, as you can see, no one was there. Keel goes down. It is roughing the kicker. Looking over to his sideline for some kind of indication. He's explaining the options of this, a running in or roughing. I don't think there's any offsetting penalty. They have a fourth down. Thing is 15. 15. You got it. <laughs> That's what uh, they're trying to explain to Keel. That it did not make it an automatic first down like it is in professional football. First down. Now they were trying to explain it was only five, see? It wasn't the flagrant roughing, which is 15. So now running into the kicker, five yard penalty, defense. That's not an automatic first down. So they're still short yardage for the first down, and they'll go back into a punt formation with a minute 28 to go in the half. And once again, Boston College is going to rush 10 men. They're not discouraged about their ability to get in there and block a punt. That's Brian Brennan, the safety man. They're all American wide receiver who runs back punt. He does it very well, averaging nine yards a punt return this year. instruction from the Notre Dame pullback blocking man. And this kicks away just barely. Brennan handles it on his 44 with a fair catch. Boston College ball, a minute 21 to go in the half. All Keel was trying to do is get that ball off his foot out of that backfield downfield somewhere. Well, he did a very good job. His timing was good. He caught the ball, didn't let it uh, penetrate as Mihalik did into his stomach, which really caused the timing to break down, and Notre Dame blocked the Boston College punt earlier in the game. 19 to 12, Notre Dame. A minute 21 to go in the first half, and Boston College now trying to move in for a score. If they can, with a lone setback, they're in a spread formation. He's already thrown two touchdown passes. He's it. He goes down to the 39. They get to it. 
each time they've gotten to him. They've been close, but he's always been agile enough to move out and avoid the rush. That's John Autry, number 38, the tackle, who reached him from Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's the nose tackle, but he can play anywhere along that line of scrimmage as Notre Dame moves their men either to the strong or short side. He was hit a couple of times before Autry got him down. On second down, that pass incomplete to Troy Stratford, the tailback. And now Boston College is a third down coming. And 15 with 49 seconds to go in the half. They've been a very spasmodic offensive team. Uh, their first drive, they threw the ball extremely well. Then they went four possessions without a first down. Then made another excellent 69-yard drive and four plays to pick up their second touchdown. One thing about Flutie, he never gets discouraged. Jerry Powell said, I've seen films of him. He'll throw three interceptions and then come back and kill you. He never gets down. Highly confident. Always sure that he can move his team on third down. That pass was caught at the 47. A very difficult catch made by Scott Gieselman, the tight end. Yeah, and not nearly enough for the first down. For, oh, excuse me. 35 seconds to go. They have a fourth down and six. Fourth and six. And Boston College is getting its punting team back in. John Mihalik is in. The punting is the main thing about the punting in this game is just to catch the ball first. In this frigid weather, be sure you don't fumble it. Greg Bell is a safety man. The punting hasn't been a thing of beauty. Well, the ball is cold. It doesn't oh. respond like it does in warmer weather oh. either. We're and down to six seconds to go, and Notre Dame has called time to stop the clock at six seconds and a half. They're thinking perhaps we can block the punt. We do. The clock will get killed again because possession will have changed, and we might be in field goal range. Steve Diossi is making the snap. Jack Bicknell Jr., the son, had a freak accident uh, working indoors. He had what they call a turf toe injury in his big toe. It became swollen and it just didn't go down. And they thought that, that maybe he could snap the ball tonight. They started him in there once, but then he took him back out again. And Diossi, the linebacker, will do the snapping. With six seconds to go in the half. And they're not going to kick the football. Oh. Maybe Flutie will run it around six seconds. Five, four, three, two. He's going to go deep. He throws the bomb. Look at that arm on that kid, though. He threw that ball nearly 60 yards, trying to go to Brennan, who was out of the end zone. He has a very strong arm. He has the arm strength that the Pro Scouts look for, even though he's short. So, Cat Sports is presenting the 1983 Liberty Bowl. We'll be back with halftime activities after this message from your local station. Just told Jerry Faust, he's saying a prayer for him, but Jerry said, I can use it. A man who has always been very considerate and very kind in good times and in not so good times, Jerry Faust. It seems like you guys have played almost two games in one half. You were up for a while, and then you had a little slip. Well, we did. We had a couple penalties that cost us there that uh, uh, we lost momentum there uh, as far as giving them the ball back. we got to try to keep the ball away from them because they're so explosive offensively. I've been pleased with our defense so far and our offense, but it's the second half yet, and uh, it's going to be a tough game. And uh, It's a well-played game by both teams right now. Jerry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we've, we've interviewed or talked every year. You put me on the spot or I'm going to put, put you on there. You know that. But we've known each other many years, and when you got the job at Notre Dame, you told me this is not a great football team right now. A lot of people thought it was. But a couple of weeks ago in your office in South Bend, you said we are not very far away from being a truly good football team. Well, we think we're getting there. And uh, we think that... Uh, with a couple breaks and keep away from the injuries and have a good recruiting year this year. We think we're going to be mighty good next year. But right now, we just want to beat Boston College and let our seniors go out in style. What do you mean a good recruiting year? You know that you get every player you ever want. <laughs> I wish that was true, Dave. <laughs> okay, Jerry, go be with your team. Thank you very much. All right, curtain bud. Nineteen. 
14 to 12. A quick uh, word, bud, about this first half. Well, Boston College has been very inconsistent, Kurt. Uh, the Notre Dame defense has done an excellent job of rushing him and done a good job covering. The first time they got the football, it looked like they were going to really be able to move it consistently, but then they went four possessions without a single first down. Finally, had a four-play offense for a touchdown, but then inconsistent again. Combination of inconsistent throwing, inconsistent receiving, coupled with good defense by Notre Dame. That's Bud Wilkinson working with me tonight. Uh, this game under the auspices of the National Collegiate Athletic Association. And while the Notre Dame band performs on the field, we'll hear these messages from the NCAA. Football teams here in South Bend, where, by the way, it's two degrees tonight, about 10 degrees above zero here, and so is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish Band. Tennessee and our score is 19 to 12 in favor of Notre Dame and we'll be back with more activity. Liberty Bowl at the luncheons and the activities have had uh, salutes to the Olympic Games and right now we're going to take a preview and a salute to the Olympic Games from the United States side. leading Boston College 19 to 12. The Boston College's band's on the field, and let's give them a listen.
halftime activities after these words from Boston College and Notre Dame. At the University of Notre Dame, crickets and wind tunnels have something in common. Both are important tools in research, the discovery of new knowledge. Researchers here are studying fields ranging from insect communications to aerodynamics, from radiation chemistry to germ-free animals. These areas of study may be worlds apart, but they are the vital components of the world of teaching and research, a world enriching the minds of students and enhancing lives around the globe. Commanding the heights above one of the world's most vibrant cities, Boston College, a major center of academic achievement since 1863. Today, a distinguished faculty instills Jesuit standards of excellence in the university community of 14,000 graduate and undergraduate students from around the globe. Living its motto, ever to excel, Boston College takes pride in an academic tradition that prepares students for a challenging future. Now let's go down to the field here. We're at halftime of the 25th Liberty Bowl game. Notre Dame's ahead of Boston College, 19 to 12, and it's the Olympic ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, the eyes of the world will be focused on the United States in only a few months as the games of the 23rd Olympiad open in Los Angeles, California. Tonight at the Liberty Bowl, the Silver Anniversary, we toast this great international event with our own salute to the young men and women who will represent the United States of America in the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles. May I present your hostess for this Olympic salute, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Miss America, Vanessa Williams! because the Olympics are coming to the United States. And here at Memphis, we are the first major sports event to be able to light our torch and wave our flag for our young Americans who are competing against other athletes from dozens of countries. They're the best, the strongest, and the fastest, and we're proud to be a part of it.
the Olympic ceremonies been on here at halftime, 19 to 12, Notre Dame. We'll be back after these messages. Back here at halftime at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, January 27th is uh, going to be a big fight night presented by Cat Sports with Thomas Hearn, the WBC super welterweight champ. He's going to be fighting Luigi Mincillo of Italy, who has won 42 bouts and lost two. And Tom, I under understand he is the number one uh, super welterweight in Europe. Yeah, that's correct. What do you know about him? Well, I know that he's a very good fighter. Um, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing him work, but I've heard a lot of great things about him. Uh, he has great ability, I heard, and um, he's a very good inside fighter. So my plan is just to come out and just box him. You're still living in the Detroit area? Yes, I am. I want to tell you, the smartest man down here for this Liberty Bowl game, look at that fur coat. Sugar Ray Leonard's coming back to boxing. That means some big purses, some big money. You'll be worrying about six of those coats the next time I see you, maybe. Hopefully, Kurt, if you get the match going and get it over right, I will have more. What did you think about Sugar Ray returning? I thought it was a great idea. Well, I thought it was great that he returned back to boxing, but I don't think it was a good uh, decision for him to make. But uh, I am glad that he did make his decide that he was going to make his comeback. So give me a chance to, to, to uh, get back in there and get my revenge. Well, you got a real scramble now in the middleweights, the super welterweights, five or six uh, of you fellas, really top-notch name fighters, and uh, we should have some excitement there. Uh, Thomas Hearns, are you a football fan? Well, I'm not, not a big football fan. I attend to watch football every now and then when I get a chance to cut. Enjoying the game tonight? Oh, this is a great game. I love the game. Um, in fact, I think Notre Dame is doing a great job tonight. Well, they are so far. We'll see what will happen in the second half. That's Thomas Hearns. He'll be fighting Luigi Mancillo January 7th, and this 27th, it'll be presented by Cat Sports. And right now, let's go to commercials, and we'll be back with the second half here at the Liberty Bowl. The 25th Annual Liberty Bowl is brought to you by... We're here at the end of the halftime activities, and the score is Notre Dame 19, Boston College 12. Well, the teams are back on the field, and we'll be back here with the second half after this message from the NACDA. Boston College in the dark, Cardinal jerseys, Notre Dame in white spreading out to receive. Very quickly, the rushing yardage is in favor of Notre Dame. The first half statistics are about like we expected. Notre Dame, 117 yards rushing, 70 passing. Boston College, on the other hand, 142 yards throwing the ball. Flutie was 21 attempts, six completions, and one interception. And the important statistic, of course, is what Notre Dame hoped to do. If you look at the time of possession, the last line, 19 minutes and 49 seconds for Notre Dame against 10 and 11. Waldron's kick. Has it he slips and falls on the Notre Dame 24 yard line? That's right, Notre Dame has had the ball twice as much as Boston College. Jack Bicknell, the BC coach, was afraid of a ball control game against his team. He said, If I were them, that's what I do is keep the ball all I could, and Notre Dame's done that very effectively. They'll put the ball in play on their own 24. Remarkably, in this 10 degree, 11 degree temperature, only one turnover against each team. Blair Keel, still a quarterback for Notre Dame, and that's been by a pass interception. Neither team has fumbled the ball on a cold, cold night. Keel, I think it's come through. He's over the 30. Check that it's uh, Chris Smith. Chris Smith has carried the ball tonight. That's his 10th carry. He's a leading ball carrier. Big upset in this game. Everybody thought Stratford or Pinkett would be the leading ball carrier. But the Notre Dame fullback is the top ball carrier in the game. And that little counter fake that he made had the two linebackers, Jassy and Jaffney, take a step in the wrong direction. They couldn't get back quickly enough to keep them from picking up the nine-yard game. Second down and a yard to go. Heel of 
the long signal count. And he keeps the ball, uh, throws it deep, and it is going to be caught at the 25 of Boston College. The Notre Dame man got the inside position. That is uh, Joe Howard. Joe Howard is only 5'9", but he had him blocked out almost like a postman in basketball. And Ratajkowski was just not able to get to it. Uh, a very slow fake, almost tackled from behind. Keel keeps his poise, rolls it to the outside. It's a long ball downfield. You can see that the receiver was able to move in front of Ratajkowski, make the catch, and it was Howard doing an excellent job of handling the pass, which was slightly underthrown, but his body position was so good, he could keep Ratajkowski from interfering with his catch. That was a 43-yard pass play. Notre Dame in the lead, 19-12, to 12, has the ball now. It's Chris Smith again. He stopped on the 22-yard line. And he's hit there by Mike Root, the nose guard, and Rod Wanky, the tackle. We were told uh, before the game that Notre Dame be running his fullback much more than any other time. Why do you suppose they went to that strategy, bud? Well, because they knew that uh, the entire Boston College defense would be keying on Pinkett. They faked to Pinkett. They used the counter with him. Smith carrying the ball very effectively. Second down eight. There's a straight dive tackle play. That's Chris Smith again. Bangs to the 19-yard line of Boston College. And the hit is made by Steve Diossi, 99, Ted Gaffney, 57, and Rob Swanky, the tackle. On the BC 19, third down four for the Fighting Irish. They're already in the lead, 19 to 12. 12.38 to go in the third quarter. Boston College has moved their linebackers up closer to the line of scrimmage to give more quick support against the quick-hitting handoff plays of Notre Dame. Our spread to the right, Jackson to the left. Out of the I formation. Third down four for the Irish. First man, Smith stopped at the 16. They're about a yard short of the first down. Scott Harrington, the left tackle, nailed him there. And time and decision. Do you go for the first down or do you go for the field goal? They've got a seven-point lead now. And Keel is looking over. Wants to get the serious instruction from the bench. And it looks as though we have field goal people coming in, but I don't believe so. There are two people coming in, and they're going to call the play. It's Mark Brooks, the other fullback, and a tight end. Going for on in. They're going for it. They put two extra blockers in there. They have a fourth down one from the BC 16-yard line. Take it, and he may be stopped at the 15. He slipped as he started into the line. He's hit by Scott Harrington and Ted Gaffney. I don't think he quite made it. Chris. I don't either. I think he's about six, eight inches short. They look to the far sideline, and they say, no, they're not even going to measure. Boston College stops him on fourth down and will take over. It'll be BC's ball on their own 15 for the first down. This is a, here's Doug Flutie coming on. Flutie in the first half attempted 21 passes, completed six, way below his seasonal percent of 51%, but he had two touchdown passes, and he was sacked one. You've got to lay a little of that on the weather. Cold hands and receivers. Stratford to the 15, takes away to the 20, to the 25, first down at the 31. That's the best run by Troy Stratford tonight, and the safety man, Joe Johnson, had to hit him, and right now to uh, Dave Dial. Okay, we're, we're with Coach Jack McNell, and Jack, you didn't tell your guys a whole lot during the halftime. You just said, we can win this game, is really all you said. Well, we said we, we're playing, and we, we're playing with a lot of enthusiasm. We want to play. It's just that we got to make some plays, and we got to hope we can turn the ball over. And that was a big play right there. We don't let them to come down and score. Now we got a real good shot right now. And you also told your guys that uh, Pinkett's elusive, and when you think you've got him tackled, make doubly sure, right? Yeah, we got to fly to the ball. Everybody's got to fly to the ball. Kids are great backs. Okay, thank you so much, Jack. We have a man down, Mark Bardwell, the left guard of BC. We have a timeout. So uh, we'll go away and be right back with the score. Notre Dame 19, Boston College 12. 
Cardwell went out, the left guard, replaced by Steve Trapillo, number 65 of Milton, Mass. There he is, Bardwell. They're attending him. We've had uh, very few players injured tonight, bud. It's uh, about the second one. I think it had to be taken out. And it's uh, unusual when you're playing on such a cold night. When your muscles are not loose and relaxed. They're much, much easier to pull a muscle and strain. Both teams are hitting very hard, playing very cleanly. And for those that have maybe just joined us, about 11 degrees above zero here in this game. Now they shift into the eye, a little something different on that shift. First down, BC. Bradford breaks it over the 35, comes out to the 40. Now he's starting to move. He was stopped uh, cold in the first half. I think that uh, Boston College would be thinking we must run the ball to set up the passing game and this is the second time that Stanford has made an excellent cutback and picked up just short of a first down. I thought he'd made it. He made the first down on the previous play. Made nine yards on that one. Very good read and excellent ability to break back against the grain. Second down and a yard to go. He's gained 25 yards in his last two carries. Rudy throws it deep and Brennan has it. Brennan is out of bounds on the 20-yard line. Brennan turned and cleverly got position that time on the defender. That was Pat Valley. And give the credit on the throw and the great positioning by Brian Brennan. And it was almost a repeat of the play that Notre Dame had just a few moments ago. Valley is in good position. However, Brennan is able to move his body in front of Valley, maintaining position between Valley and the ball and making the catch for the big game. Boston College is now on the Notre Dame 20-yard line after that 40-yard pickup. A couple little dynamite players. Brennan's only 5'10". Flutie's 5'9", but probably the most famous passing battery in the history of Boston College. Here they go on first down. Flutie keeps it. Runs to the 20 to the 15. He's pushed out of bounds on the 14. A six-yard pickup on the bootleg by Doug Flutie. Rick Naylor, the strong side linebacker, bumped him out. I think he wanted to throw the ball in the play, but uh, the receivers were covered downfield. He didn't hesitate. He took what he could get, and it was a very nice five-yard gain. All right, they're getting a sub in now. Another wide receiver comes on. And that's Scott Gesselman coming in, the tight end. Keep the defense confused. Will you pass or will you run? Makes it much easier for the offense to function. Flutie's the third leading rusher this season for Boston College as a quarterback. It is second down four for the BC Eagles on the 14 in Notre Dame. And going to the 11-yard line is Troy Stratford from Linden, New Jersey. His longest run this year has been 32. He's starting, uh, starting to open up here now in the third quarter. We have 10-11 to go in the third quarter, 19-12 Notre Dame. And Gieselman, once again, after they were in a preliminary formation to run the ball, moved to the opposite side so that he could be lined up against Naylor, who normally is a linebacker, not playing against a tight end. They have third down and about a foot to go, just short of the Notre Dame 10-yard line. They get another tight end. They have Steve Strahan, a tailback, who is a short yardage power runner. He's in there in place of Stratford. But Beast took the fullback as the up back. They need a foot. Strahan makes it. He dives over the 10. They would appear to make it, but maybe they'll measure. Mike Griffin, the tackle, made the hit for Notre Dame. He's a second string tackle, playing behind John Autry. It's a very tough play by Krzanek, who comes up. He's untouched. He moves in. He's able to knock the ball carrier down. Was not able to get a very solid contact on him. But we have it fourth down now in inches to now, go. I thought he was over the 10. Evidently not. They're not even going to measure. Fourth down in inches. Look at Notre Dame digging up front now. Strahan and Beastick. Flutie to Beastick. And he surges forward. 
effort, and I think on that second or third effort, as he slid along the line, he may have made it. Marvelous job of ball carrying. He really did not have good blocking. There was no opening, but he just kept sliding to the outside and was able finally, with great leg drive, to move himself forward for the first down. He get pretty good blocking inside, then he moves to the outside, slides, slides, and he finally is able to pick up the yardage for the first down. Well, we're not sure yet they're going to measure. I thought I saw him well across that 10-yard line. I thought, the, uh, but, uh, market see. was just about on the 10, but uh, makes it exciting, and most people need some exercise in a cold night anyway. DC has it, but just barely. It is over the 10-yard line, and that's where the yard stick was. I was surprised he didn't measure the time before, but it was that close. I thought they would also. Where the officials mark the ball is so vitally important on first down, second down, and then they all get very serious about it when it's third down and short or fourth and short. Now the first downs are 11 to 10 in favor of Notre Dame. Notre Dame leads in the score, 19 to 12, nine minutes to go in the third quarter. And here is the first and goal to go for BC on the Notre Dame 10. As they mingle around trying to fool Notre Dame, Flutie is being chased, he scrambles, he throws on the run, and he has the pass completed at the five-yard line. And he hits Phelan, Gerard Phelan out there, who uh, caught a 28-yard touchdown pass earlier. And that was a great example of Flutie's skill. It was a straight bootleg. No one blocking on the outside men in Notre Dame. He was quick enough to get to the outside. They recovered very well. Being off balance, moving into his left. He still put the ball right on target to Phelan. Second down, five to go for a BC touchdown. A slot right with the I formation. forward to the three if Strahan stays in there and takes it down to the three or four yard line Notre Dame really pursued that play well Golick chased him all the way across and the safety man Joe Johnson helped very good team pattern of defense don't let them turn the corner to the outside force him back to the inside let your pursuit pistol pick him up now they're having a conference down there I don't know what this is about who know? Personal foul, dead ball foul, each team. Personal foul, dead ball foul on each team. And that means two players were a little active after the play against each other. And the umpire is explaining it to Jack McNell so that he understands. And when neither team gets hurt, the coach can accept that much easier. And now we're getting both teams in the conference. And I think they're saying, let's cool it, gentlemen. Let's cool it. We've had a fine game thus far. Let's keep it that way. I wish we could hear him. I know that's what he's saying, Kurt. Yeah. No reason to lose your cool at this point in time. The ball's on the Notre Dame three-yard line. And it's third down and three to go. There's a signal being sent in by Coach McNell. The hand signals on the sideline. Third and three for a Boston College touchdown. And Joe Diaquinto, reserve receiver, comes on. Crossing pattern by Gieselman. He's wide open across the field. Excellent throw right on target. But again, I thought it would be some kind of a bootleg where they'd ask the Notre Dame people to adjust to Flutie's movement. The crossing pattern to Gieselman, wide, wide open. They're within one point of a tie. 
Bradford, his first four carries, lost nine yards. His last six carries are lining up for the two points. They're trailing 19-18. They're going for the lead. Now he looks, he throws, he's got him, and it's tipped away. They had him out in the open. It was a great save. It was intended for Gieselman, and Virginia was out there to knock the ball away. And Notre Dame has stopped him again on a conversion. So we'll be back with a score right here in the third quarter. Notre Dame 19, Boston College 18. Five-yard uh, drive by Boston College. Here's another angle on the touchdown pass to the tight end. And you can see Flutie stumble again as he goes back. However, he recovers his poise nicely, gets the ball out there. It's a little bit too long, but it was tipped. And Flutie is so concerned. I thought I had it. And I hope I can get it there and get their ball. And, oh, well, it just didn't quite make it. You know, twice on those two pointers, he slipped coming away from the center. I don't know whether it bothered him or not. Jefferson, the freshman, has it on the kickoff return. Comes through. Is up to the 30. He broke one for 91 yards this year. And is finally down along his 30 or 31-yard line by Brian Waldron, the man that did the kicking off. Notre Dame's ball, first down now. I don't think that uh, Boston College is necessarily trying to go with the two points because they were trying to get ahead. They haven't had very good field goal or extra point kicking. I think they thought their odds were better to get the two points than to miss the kick. Heel, Smith, Pinkett lined up in the eye. Down Notre Dame on their 30. Miller coming in motion. Pinkett takes the toss. This is what he likes. He's at the 35. He's at the 40. 45 and up to the 48. Double the ball out of bounds, but he picks up the first down. About 50% of the time, they like to make that toss to Pinkett and get him outside. He's been very effective all year. And he had a marvelous block from the freshman receiver, Elvin Miller, number 17. And I think that's the first time, Kurt, that he's really turned the corner on the sweep. He's made a lot of yardage, but it's been starting wide, then finding that gap inside, breaking it up inside. That time, he was able to turn the corner. They're on the 50-yard line now with the first down. Pinkett has 77 yards rushing. He has it again. There they look at him. One, he broke away from two, but they finally got him at the 48. But it took three hits to bring him down, and David Pereira, the strong safety, was the man that nailed him. It'll be second down, eight for Notre Dame on the BC 48. In the first half, Yossi and Gaffney were playing about six yards from the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame was able to run the ball because their support was not quick enough. They've moved up now to about four and a half yards, as you could see. They were supporting quicker and were able to be in on the tackle, even though Pickett made two men miss. Six and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. 1918 Notre Dame. That's the fullback, Chris Smith again, plowing over the 45 to the BC 42. Mike Ruth, the nose guard from Norristown, Pennsylvania, made the stop on him. And we'll have a third down coming. And it's third, third and short two. again. Third, third and two, two. right. that can block better, at least theoretically can block better. The play is given to Keel, who has played a very fine game of quarterback for Notre Dame. This has been as advertised. Uh, Notre Dame better on the run and Boston College better on the pass. Third and two. Keel keeps the ball. Throws a short one out for the first down to Mark Bavaro, the tight end. A fake inside to hold him to the tailback Pinkett, and Bavaro slipped out. They've been effective with that about three times tonight. Very difficult when you're geared to stop the run. Your linebackers are supporting the tight end coming off after faking his block, moving to the outside. He's a very, very hard man to cover. First down, Notre Dame on the Boston College 35. 19 to 18, Notre Dame. 5.38 to go in the third period. In the eye. He may have had a half yard down there at the bottom of the pile. Number 68, Mike Ruth, has been outstanding tonight. The nose guard, he's slow getting up. They may have to call a time for him. He's a man that they cannot afford to lose. Very strong, very quick. They have a knee or an upper leg injury. 
Trainer of Boston College attending him. So while they, uh, they work on the outstanding sophomore nose guard of Boston College, Mike Ruth, we're going to be back here, and the score is Notre Dame 19 and Boston College 18. him as nose guard. Blair Keel keeps the ball after the fake, throws a pass out to Elvin Miller, the freshman. He's hit immediately at the 31 of BC by Todd Russell, the right cornerback. Here's uh, the nose guard, Mike Ruth. The BC coaches think he's as good as anybody in America at that position, and he's only a sophomore. And you can see that it's an ankle problem, left ankle. It doesn't look to be too bad, and uh, the trainers, doctors have moved it around just a little bit. To maybe it will recover, and he'll be able to come back and play. Third and six for Notre Dame in their single back setup. Neal throws a quick one, and it hits the back of the tight end, Bavaro. He had his back to the ball as he started down. That's one of those plays, Kurt, where Bavaro failed to read the uh, fact that the linebackers were going to rush. Bavaro is supposed to break it to the inside. The linebackers do rush. Keel saw it. Bavaro didn't. Keel throws the ball. Bavaro should be breaking across to the inside where the linebackers came from. The ball hit him in the back. That was the Aussie 99. He's been all over the field tonight. Punt formation. Blair Keel. Wait a minute. And Mark. now a timeout's been called by Boston College. I think they're fearful again of uh, Keel's four, five, ability seven, to... Eight, nine, ten. They had 12 men on the field, I think. I think it was that. So we're going to be back again. And our score with 4.35 to go in the quarter. 19-18 Notre Dame. It is fourth down and six for Notre Dame. Blair Keels in punt formation. They're on the Boston College 31. If you're wondering why they don't go for a field goal, they're, I think Larry and Mike Johnson's low trajectory kick. They don't want to get one blocked and have BC recover the ball up around midfield and be in better field position. They also have some running plays and a pass run option with Keel rolling out, so there's no guarantee he will punt. a good bounce on this one. It's on the one-yard line, and Boston College will be operating in very dangerous territory right now. Let's go down to Dave for a report on the injured player. All right, Kurt, I just spoke with trainer Randy Shroud, and he tells me that the injured player has a sprain to his left ankle. They're treating it now, and possibly he could come back to the game, but it's uncertain as of now. Thank you, Dale. And that's the nose guard of Boston College in a tower straight tonight, Mike Ruth. And uh, when Notre Dame gets that ball back again, they may go to work in the middle. That's the way she would plan to run because Ruth has been so tough all night. Test his back up and see how effective he can play. Well, they're right on our goal line, one yard line when Flutie puts him in. Neither team's fumbled the ball away tonight. And that is near safety. Not quite. They hit by Mike Griffin on Bob Beastick, the fullback from Meriden, Connecticut, senior. Trap play up the middle and the trap failed to work as Notre Dame converts everyone to the inside. Both these teams have a good nucleus coming back next year. BC has most of their players coming back. Quarterback, Moody the junior, strapped for the tailback, the sophomore. Brennan will be gone. Notre Dame has a lot of freshmen and sophomores in this squad. Second down, 10. BC on their one yard line. Picked 
picked up a half yard or a yard. And they're going to have a third and nine. John Oxley burrowed underneath that pile. And watch the excellent charge of the Notre Dame defensive line from the right side of the screen. They're low. They knock the Boston College line back. Offensive line is knocked back. There is no room for the Walker. Stratford lowered his shoulder, tried to make some yardage, but there was no daylight. Stratford was skipping around looking for that hole before he got to the line. He said, nothing. I'm just going to get in there and hold out of the ball. It is third down, nine and a half to go for BC on their yard and one yard line. Third and ten. Flutie will throw out of the end zone. He shoots it. It's complete and out of bounds on the uh, 17. Yep. Brian Brennan caught that ball. Pat Ballage was there, but it should be a first down. Boston College and a big first down for him. And Brennan made Ballage back up to protect against the deep throw, then gave it the quick break to the outside. The timing of Flutie's pass was perfect. Statistic for Flutie. He's thrown three touchdown passes in the game. He hasn't had a high percentage record. And first down, Stratford. They bulldog him out on the 18-yard line. That's Rick Naylor, the strong side linebacker. And Naylor really did look strong. Able to just dominate the ball carrier with his tackle. Second and nine. BC hasn't had a lot of luck on first down plays tonight. Their passes have been dropped. Their running plays, with the exception of the drive right at the start of the second half, have not been able to break through significant yardage. It was 19 to 12 at halftime, Notre Dame. Boston College has scored a touchdown in this quarter, failed to convert. They failed to convert any extra points tonight. Second down nine from their 18. Now Flutie throws. The safety valve pass out to Stratford, who gets it to the 26. And he's brought down by John Oxley to tackle. The play is good for eight. And a beautiful read by Flutie. Everyone was covered downfield. He was able to move forward into the pocket. He knew where Stratford was when the receivers downfield were not open, and he drilled the ball to him. Doug Flutie at Natick High School was the captain of the football team, the hockey team, the baseball team. That's something to be captain three sports. Oh, he's hurt all of his life. He's too small. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. And all he does is do it. He's now hit five passes in a row. Unbalanced line. This is third and a short yard. Bradford trying to wriggle for it, and I don't know. He may have it. He's going to be very close. He lowered that head and tried to snake his way across that first down uh, pole. Golik Kovaleski teamed up to stop him. The uh, movement to the unbalanced line forced Notre Dame to overshift with them, but they did an excellent job of it. Watch Stratford here as he just kind of eases his way through, bounces, meets some opposition, keeps his feet, crawls forward, and uh, haven't got a measurement yet about the first down. But, uh, the officials are discussing it, looking at it. And we have Pat Bally's down, Bud, the uh, weak side cornerback from Pueblo, Colorado. His brother, Howard, played at Colorado U, and he's a cousin of Don Baylor, the Major League Baseball player. Pat Bally's being helped off. He led the secondary in tackles. He was soft. And we did get the first down on the play. So now Boston College is on their 27-yard line. They're trailing 19 to 18 with a minute 38 to go in the third quarter. Troy Wilson has replaced Bally's as cornerback for Notre Dame. Booty brings him up in the eye. He might have taken off there and picked up 10 or 15 yards in a scramble. I, I thought he could have, bud. I thought he had daylight to run with it also, Kurt. But, uh, he saw his receiver was open and uh, dropped the ball in there. Stratford, if he'd broken the tackle, might have made a big, big gain, too, but he was unable to do so. Rudy's a good student. He's very wisely. I 
He's been interviewed more than anybody in recent years in New England. Switched from the computer sciences to communication. And he communicates very well <laughs> with his teammates. On the 36 of BC, second in the short yard. There goes Stratford. Stratford has the first down. Lowers his head, goes to the 40. Now, he was stopped cold in the first half, and, boy, he's starting to pick it up in the second half. He's had an outstanding third quarter here. Very strong runner. As we mentioned earlier, not a big man. He's 5'8", only 182, but he gets his body in perfect position when he gets close to contact. He's low. His shoulders are low. His knees are high. He doesn't give the tackler much of a target. We're down to 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. There's Ballage, who was injured. Appears to be all right. First down, Boston College on their 40-yard line. 19 to 18, Notre Dame. A lone setback. Great drop back. He really throws better in this than anywhere. And uh, dropped. He had the receiver. And that's Gieselman, who's dropped two or three tonight. I think that time he failed to keep his eyes on the ball. I know he did. Uh, he was looking to run. He knew he was open. He could feel no pressure. He took his eye off the ball and simply drops it. Sprejanic is dropping back to cover, but you can see Gieselman beat him to the outside and moves to the outside further. The ball is right there. Simply took his eye off the ball, failed to make the catch. Second down, 10, Boston College on its 40. This will be the last play of the third quarter. They're going to run it, and they go to the 44, carrying the ball to Ken Bell. I think they're going to call it down, but no, I guess not. Time has run out for the third period. Teams will now exchange goals, and we'll be back with a score, 19 to 18, Notre Dame. This is presenting the 1983 Liberty Bowl. The fourth quarter will get underway after this word from your local state. Well, these cameramen have been out here about three, four hours before the game, and near zero temperature, working hard to bring you the pictures. Fourth quarter, Kurt Gowdy, Bud Wilkinson, and Dave Dial. It's third down and seven. Boston College on his 43. Notre Dame's ahead 19 to 18. Flutie, the short one, incomplete, way out of the reach of Brian Brennan. Let's go down to Dave Dial. Well, evidently we have a little technical problems. The third quarter, Kurt, uh, Boston College changed the time of possession. They had the ball eight minutes and 26 seconds. Notre Dame, six minutes, 34. John Mihalik at punt formation. It's a low kick away, bounding around, and uh, going to be touched by a BC player on the 32-yard line of Notre Dame. And now before Notre Dame takes over for their first uh, possession of the fourth quarter, we'll tell you the score, 19-18 Notre Dame. Kick. Wow. Notre Dame has the ball. They lead by one point. They've been held scoreless in the third quarter. BC went 85 yards in a drive but failed to convert. They made a very good drive there, Kurt, from their one yard line to get themselves out of horrible field position. A very fine pass to Brennan on third down and 10. Brooks and Pinkett are in the backfield. Pinkett has it. Pinkett breaks it, comes out to the 40, and they spill him and save a touchdown, maybe. He fumbled when he was already down to the 47. A tackle by Tony Thurman, who upset him. Pinkett says, boy, I should have gone. Let's go down to Dave Dial, who's going to talk to the BC quarterback, Doug Flutie. Uh, Kurt, you've mentioned what kind of a young man this really is, Doug Flutie. And this game is not for you and not for Boston College, is it, Doug? It's for somebody else. Yeah, I want to say hi to Casey in the hospital down at St. Jude's. Also, I'd like to say hi to Mom and Dad. Doug, uh, you're going to pull this one out? Oh, yeah. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. We're moving the ball all right. The defense just has to hold him. We're all set. Okay. That's it. That was Mark Brooks, the fullback. The fullbacks have been effective. He's only played four or five plays in the game, but that's a big one. He played under Jerry Faust at Moeller High School in Cincinnati. And now suddenly Notre Dame has moved from its 32-yard line to the Boston College 30. Two successive first down plays that uh, broke for further than the 10 yards needed. And Brooks is uh, 
strong athlete, 6'3", 228 pounds. Notre Dame on the BC 30-yard line. First down, Notre Dame ahead, 19 to 18. They were a three-point underdog. Again, Mark Brooks. He picked up three yards to the 27. He's hit by Scott Harrington, the left tackle, and David Thomas, the second string defensive right in. The quick toss to the fullback uh, didn't quite get the corner turned at that point. Berline uh, was expected to play some in the game, but Keel has had a very hot hand, and uh, the Notre Dame coaching staff, Jerry Faust, felt that if he did have a hot hand, he's a senior playing his last game. Let's give him the opportunity. Blair Keel. Hand off. They stop him at the 23-yard line. That's Alan Pinkett. Let's check his yardage. When he gets under 100 yards a game, it's an upset. He's had nine 100-yard games this year, an all-time Notre Dame record. He's just a sophomore. He's now at 99 yards in this game. He's oh, going to yeah. break the 100 without any question, Kurt. He gets an awful lot of it with his own skill at reading the defense and breaking after the defenders have fought off the proper pressure of the blocks. He goes back to the area that they left. It is third and three for the Fighting Irish. And the Boston College 23. 12.50 to play now in the game. Jackson in motion. A fumble by Keel. They're going for the ball. Boston College has it at the 32-yard line at BC. David Pierre, the strong safety, fell on it. That's the first time on a cold, cold night that either team has lost the ball by a fumble. That's a remarkable performance by both teams. It certainly is. There's been two interceptions. We watch Keel here. The ball just simply bounces off of his hands. He moves them away just a little bit. Kelly snapped it properly, but he couldn't hold the ball. And the... <coughs> Safety man, Pereira, was the one able to come in and make the recovery of the fumble. All right, there's Flutie talking to his coach, Big Now. We're going to be back here with a score. Notre Dame 19, Boston College 18. College Kurt uh, felt that they would throw a lot of screen passes. They have used a draw to cut down on the rush, but they haven't thrown any screens. Perhaps they will as we move here into the dying moments of the fourth quarter. There are the stats. Second down for Boston College on their 37. They're trailing by one point. 12 minutes to play. Eastman goes tight in left. Stratford on the pitch. Not much room, but he makes it. He comes over the 40. Very close to the first down at the Boston College 41. Troy Stratford. Well, he's had a good second half. Very good block by Gieselman, the tight end that Picked time. Picked up five that time. He has 54 yards now. About all of them in the second half. We're getting the measurement here. He had 136 yards, bud, in the second one half against Clemson. That's 
quite a performance. That Clemson is one of the great that, teams, too. Yeah, they, uh, the BC tied them year before last, beat them this year, and I think Clemson lost only two games the last three years. And they have the sticks and have a first down. And the first down by running helps set up through these passes as we have been a very important drive this time for Boston College. There's still plenty of time, uh, 11 minutes, 39 seconds, but uh, this is a key drive. You think Flutie's confident when Dave asked him, uh, you're going to pull a time? Yeah, oh, I love sure. it. <laughs> sure. do. No question time. at all. Why did Dave laugh? Why did he even <laughs> ask me? First down, Boston College. Brennan, quarterback, throws the ball, and it is incomplete. Brennan was a high school quarterback, maybe intercepted by Notre Dame. Stacy Turan it was intended for Gerard Phelan, and it is intercepted by Turan. Red and that's their end around or their flanker reverse that he throws the ball. He was a high school quarterback in Michigan. He didn't really uh, run it hard. You can see him kind of floating a little bit. Then he ran a few steps. Then he forced the play. His receiver is not open. The interception is made very cleanly. Turan doing a good job of not being drawn up by the running fake. Oh, Notre Dame has it back. Each team with two turnovers now. And our score again is 19 to 18, the Fighting Irish. He's gone all the way tonight, the senior quarterback. He has attempted more passes than any quarterback in Notre Dame history now, 624. He has started 30 games for Notre Dame in his career, counting tonight's Liberty Bowl game. First down, 25-yard line of Notre Dame. The Irish in possession, trying to protect the one-point lead. The rollout by Keel. And in the seam is his receiver, Jackson. He hits him. And he's got him at the 36-yard line for a first down. Milt Jackson, the sophomore from Fairfield, Iowa. Steve Diossi and David Ferreira made the tackle. And the running fake has been effective for Notre Dame all evening. Pinkett has run the ball effectively, so the fullbacks, Smith and Brooks, when they come over the ball, either one of them, it freezes the linebackers long enough to give the receivers time to be open. First down, Notre Dame on their 36. They have the lone setback. That's the fullback, Smith. He's over the 40, 45. He's still going at the 50. First down in the B.C. territory at the Boston College, 49. This is his best game career-wise ever on the ground. He's getting close to 100 yards. Chris Smith from Cincinnati. And you can see the lineman pulling Snell and Williams. He cuts back inside of their blocks, lowers his shoulder, breaks through the tackles of the defensive secondary, and finally is pulled down after the first down run. He has 99 yards rushing. Pinkett has 99 yards rushing. The Notre Dame probably is going to end up with a couple of 100-yard rushes in this game. That's how effective their ground game has been. They're ahead, 19-18, 10-25 to go. He will throw it on first down. Now it goes to Miller, the freshman. And Miller's pushed out of bounds on the 36. Todd Russell, the cornerback, took him out. That's just a little control pass. Out there, drive the cornerback back, come back, get the ball. Very effective. And Notre Dame has had three snaps and three first downs on this drive. That gives them the ball on the Boston College 36. They started on their own 25. They went 11 yards to their 36. And Smith broke it to the Boston College 49 for a 15-yard gain. And now this pass good for 12 yards. Out of the eye formation. Miller in motion. Pinkett, 35. Squirms over the 30, gets to the 29. He's over 100 yards in the game. That's his 10th 100-yard game of the season. And I think before he's through, he'll be the most prolific rusher in the history of Notre Dame. He's got that ability to pick up the extra four or five yards after he's very solidly hit. Hey, we're talking about the four horsemen, too. <laughs> I know that. 24, Layton, Crowley, Miller, Stuhl Dreyer. We're talking about a great back. Marchie Sports, uh, Newt Rockney's. Creighton Miller, you can't forget Creighton him. Creighton Miller, Gary Brennan. To the 26-yard line of Boston College. Notre Dame grinding it out now. 9.30 to go. They're ahead, 19 to 18. This drive started on the Notre Dame 25. 
That was Chris Smith who carried, and he should be over 100 yards. And we come in one more third and short. Boston College has been effective against short yardage plays most of the evening. Heel says inches. Inches sometimes stretch. <laughs> third down at about a foot to go 101 yards for Chris Smith 106 yards for Alan Pinkett 200 yard rushes for Notre Dame tonight power eye formation there's Pinkett guys I think he just made it he's over first down Notre Dame on the Boston College 24 good lead blocking by the two up backs and good line takeoff by the Notre Dame front seven if Boston College loses this game, unless Notre Dame scores here, those extra points are going to haunt them. Each team has scored three touchdowns. We've had only one point converted tonight. The two uh, Notre Dame misses were excellent block plays by Boston College. Their man simply broke through the protection to block the kick. First down, Notre Dame on the BC 25. Eel will throw it. Down the middle it goes. And it is broken up. Scott Harrington broke it up. And he almost had it in the air high enough for the secondary to come in and make the interception. Well, they're trying to get the ball to the fullback, Chris Smith. It is second down 10 for the Fighting Irish on the Boston College 25. We'll be seeing most of these players back next year for both schools. They should both have good teams. Heel on the dive tackle play. They run it to the 22. That's Chris Smith, the fullback. And that's one of the few times that the front line of Notre Dame has not been able to knock Boston College off the line of scrimmage. And the Eagles were there protecting their territories. Block moving along. We're approaching eight minutes to go. Bicknell. Facing no sideline. Boy, that's frustrating when the other team keeps the ball on you and you're behind. One point right now, a Notre Dame lead. Third and seven. Split backfield. Throws a quick one. Laced there at the 20 is Mark Navarro, the tight end hit by Tony Thurman. And at that time, the blitz was on again. Navarro ran the pattern he's supposed to run, but the secondary was up so quickly, they were able to hit him and stop him for a very short game. Navarro now has five catches tonight. There's the quick toss by Keel. <clears throat> the... penalty that takes the field, goal, uh, field goal that's right. right away from them or the field goal opportunity five ten fifteen a personal foul puts the ball back on the boston college 34 yard line dead ball foul personal foul offense they would have had a fourth and five on the Boston College 20 with a good field goal kicker, Johnston, to come in. And if he could have kicked a field goal, BC would have needed a touchdown to go out in front. Now Keel is going back in punt formation. And watch this. this he does a great job on this uh, previous play. He hit it high in the air, took a good bounce for Notre Dame. Notre Dame down it on the one yard line. He's going to try to do the same thing. Tony Thurman is back at the safety man. Here comes another man in the uh, game. Only had 10 men in. 7-14 to go. It's a lot of time here. And that uh, one is hooched up. It's a short high kick. Fair catch called by Thurman. Takes it on the 11-yard line. BC is deep in the hole. Seven minutes and three seconds to play. Notre Dame 19, Boston College 18. Seven minutes and three seconds to play. Boston College is trailing 19 to 18. They have the ball on their 11-yard line. And they don't 
don't think that uh, there's any team that has anyone more confident at quarterback than Boston College. Flutie said when he was interviewed, yeah, we're going to win with just total calm confidence. We find out now if he was right or not. Notre Dame will have something to say about it. The only score of the half has been an 85-yard drive, spearheaded by Flutie, but they failed to convert, and those extra points right now, they have failed to convert any one of their three touchdowns. The pass dropped at the 32 by Brian Brennan. <laughs> it wasn't an easy catch, but he got his hands on it, flying down the sideline. He truly did stretch for it. The uh, pass was just a little bit overthrown. We see Flutie come back. It's a straight drop. He's looking to his left all of the time, delivers the ball. Brennan is open on the fly pattern. Couldn't quite control it. They've got a freshman, Troy Wilson, at cornerback. Pat Ballage is still out. Maybe they're going to work on that freshman, number 12, Troy Wilson. Second down, 10 for Boston College. From their 11-yard line, 6.58 to go in the game. Brody moves into the scramble, throws a jump pass, short yardage to his 14-yard line. Gerard Phelan caught it. That was just a release to get out of trouble for Janik. Kovaleski, the two linebackers. Notre Dame has Waffled done a, him right there at the 14. Notre Dame has done a great job of containing Flutie. He's had time to throw the ball, but he's not really turned the corner very often. They've also done a great job of covering. See him here trying to get to the outside, then he knows he can't. He has to jump. He completes it, but only about a four-yard gain on the play. Those linemen average around 6'4", 6 6'5", 6 in height. A little bit shorter than the Celtics. Get their hands up there, and it's tough. Big, big third down play. Third down, eight. Here's the scramble, the pass, no good. At the 28, Brennan there. They're working on that freshman, number 12, Troy Wilson. But they're now presented with a fourth down in a punting situation. And they say to the kid, hey, come on, Frosh, that's the way to go. He did a good job of covering, and uh, the passes were not quite on target. Cold night, difficult. We need a good kick this time, or Boston College needs a good kick from Mihalik. Uh, he is not doing close to his average thus far tonight. Neither one has in this cold. This was a low one, and he goes down, and Notre Dame has the ball at the Boston College 40-yard line. Greg Bell took it there. Bell limping a little bit. He broke his ankle and uh, hasn't played since the third or fourth game of the year. So we'll be back with timeout. It's 19 to 18, Notre Dame. There are the 200-yard runners in the game. Chris Smith, Alan Pinkett for Notre Dame. Uh, Bell and Pinkett did it against Michigan State earlier this year. Keel to Pinkett. Pinkett sort of was sliding along, didn't have any acceleration, and goes down on the BC 39. Don't think really he had a fair chance that time. As you can see, Keel slipped as he started back. He was not able to get the ball to Pinkett as neatly and cleanly and as quickly as he would like to, which caused a breakdown in the timing of the play. One of the big strategies that Notre Dame has had tonight is running their fullback, which they haven't done much this year. They got 100 yards or more out of Chris Smith. And he's been a real factor. Here's Pinkett again. 40. Dies forward to the 34. And that makes it third and four. Steve Diossi up in it. Notre Dame self-destructed in his last three games. They lost their last three games a total of 10 points. 21 to 16 to Pittsburgh. 34-30 to Penn State, 23-22 to Air Force. Had they pulled two of those out or three, they could have wound up the season with nine and two. And with the clock at just under five minutes, this is the key third down play for possession for Notre Dame. Third and five. Think it. They've got him, and they stop him for a loss at the 36-yard line. And once again, the linebacker shot the gap. Got a chance to get does. penetration. And Norton... Now it's fourth down and six. Here's how he got stopped, bud. You see the linebacker shooting. That's Diossi breaking through, slowing him up, and then he's finished off with a very solid tackle by <coughs> that Look at this. Quickly, one team goes off, the other one comes on. One formation with Keel. It's fourth down, six. 4-11 to go. And Keel... Short high one, another 
fair catch call. And again, a fumble by Thurman. Tony Thurman. They have the ball. But again, they have it deep in their own territory, this time on their 12-yard line. Yeah, Last time job. they had it on their 11-yard line. Great job by Thurman to get on the fumble. <laughs> Timeout. Boston College trailing by one point. Four minutes, three seconds to play. BC 88 yards away, and we'll be back. Fairness, 10 degree above zero night. Boston College ball in their 12-yard line. Doug Flutie has hit 13 out of 32 tonight. Three touchdowns. We'll talk about the Notre Dame defense. There's Flutie slipping, leaving the center. The long pass. He's out there, and he's got him. It'll be a first down at the 48. That's Kelvin Martin, the Jacksonville, Florida freshman who can fly, working on that freshman quarterback again. And he did a good job of catching the football. Flutie almost stumbles as he goes back to set up the throw, puts it all the way downfield. Martin's wide open, as you can see. Had he not had to reach for the ball, had he could have kept in stride, he could have scored a touchdown on the play. They flip the Turan over a senior to the right side to relieve some pressure. Now Boston College has the ball on their 48-yard line. That was a 36-yard completion. First down. Time, 336 remaining in the game. They run the draw. Stratford to the 48 of Notre Dame, and that's it. The gain of four, second down, six for Boston College. You got to get out of the damn ball. It doesn't look like uh, much of a play, but it cools the rush of Notre Dame against Flutie. They aren't quite as reckless if you keep running the draw and reminding them that you have that possibility. Calvin Martin's in. Ryan Brennan comes out. Senior leaves the field. Freshman goes in. Second down, six. Boston College. Notre Dame's 48. Notre Dame ahead by a point. Flutie throws. Pass is complete. A great catch there by Gieselman, the tight end. And a little discussion about did he catch it or not, but the officials, I believe, are going to say yes, he did catch it. Time called. 2.43 to go in the game. A low grab like this, as Bud Wilkinson knows, is a very difficult catch. And uh, particularly on a cold night. Booty's rushed again just a little bit. He has the ball out there really wide. He got his hand up and under, and uh, the officials could have called it either way. Kind of a scoop catch, but i uh, not sure it was a trap. Boston College, a first down on the Notre Dame 41. 2.30 to go. 19 to 18, Notre Dame. This is DJ. The got him and they trap him he's trapped from behind by mike griffin number 94 that's the second sack of flutie tonight excellent job of a freshman from cleveland heights ohio defensive coverage downfield every man was well covered flutie looked downfield he's got time c94 forcing the play coming in hard finally he's able to move over and griffin Makes the tackle from behind. Flutie could not find the receiver open. Had to eat the ball. It is now second down, 14 for Boston College. 45-yard line of Notre Dame. Check the signals by Flutie. The pass is out there, and it's incomplete. It was knocked down by a lineman. Yeah. Deflected by a lineman. Now it's third. And 14 with a minute 30 to go. Golick, I think, was the man that made the deflection. Flutie's hands are cold, as you can see. Here he's dropping back. You see Golick coming in. Gets his hands up high. And he's able to bat the ball, deflect it. No chance to get the ball downfield. Flutie winces. Uh, everybody's asking him down here, everywhere he goes, I guess, are you too short? Five nine. He said, look, you don't throw over anybody anyway. You throw between them. Yes. I slide along and I throw between the men rushing me. I can't throw over them. Nobody can. Third down. The pass is out. And it is off the arms of Brian Brennan. And we had him there at the 25 and a flag is dropped at the line of scrimmage. I think we uh, had some kind of an infraction before the ball was snapped, Kurt. I thought I kept hearing whistles. Mm -hmm. May have been delayed. Illegal procedure, Boston College. 
if that was uh, blown at the they'll mark off the five and rerun the play and that's a, a pretty good break for Boston College yeah they have two more downs with a minute 26 to go they're certainly going to run the ball on Dead ball foul. try to throw it illegal procedure offense one minute 26 seconds to play Notre Dame 19 Boston College 18 it was 19 to 12 at the half Boston College scored on an 85 yard drive in the third quarter went for two points couldn't get it twice they've gone for two points after missing their opening uh, extra point attempt for the place kick so they have failed to convert on any of their three touchdowns Notre Dame's one conversion right now is a difference in this game third down and 20 they give him protection he comes out of the pocket he throws on the run he completes it it goes to the 35 yard line to Gerard Phelan the flanker so they got back about 15 of it and now it's a fourth down and timeout called by Boston College they have two timeouts left Stacy Turan made that hit on Phelan as he went down the middle he was trying to get to the 31 yard line where he got a first down and once again a remarkable play by Flutie rushed out of the pocket moving laterally getting rid of the ball finding his receiver and then getting the ball to him with some accuracy just checking uh, on my sheet here I think there's one timeout left officially a minute and eight seconds to go it is fourth down and four for a first down what they need is a first down yeah they're on the Notre Dame the 35 and they haven't had much luck with long field goals this year their longest has been a 40 yarder but that's right they got to get it very close before they have any confidence Ian Quinto comes in a receiver Stratford is going out Ian Quinto will be number one you've got to say Notre Dame is one play from victory if they could stop them here this is fourth and four for Boston College a minute and eight seconds to go one point lead for Notre Dame here comes the blitz he slips, he throws, and it's incomplete. Notre Dame stops him. I don't see any flags down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold right. on. They're arguing they were interfered with Joe Giaquinto, but I haven't seen a flag drop. Joe Johnson was a safety man that went over there and broke it up. On the previous uh, all-out blitz on the first drive, Flutie was able to read it, hit it for a touchdown. Watch the blitz come. Flutie has very little time here. Everybody coming. They've got seven men rushing. He almost stumbles, recovers his balance, gets rid of the ball. But Notre Dame has their defender in perfect position, and they're able to knock Boy, the pass Miller away. Miller argued on that, the Boston College fans. Troy Wilson running into the receiver, Gian Quinto down there. But anyway... Referees have made their decision. And we're getting a they bring the ball back. Of like conduct penalty, I believe, Kurt. Dead ball foul, personal foul, defense, first down. That's against Boston College with a minute, four seconds to go. Jerry Faust, team now, all they have to do is run it out, and he has an upset win here in the 25th annual Liberty Bowl game. Boston College has only one timeout, so it'll be easy for Notre Dame to freeze the ball and end the game. Down goes Keel. He's gone all the way tonight. It'll be second down coming. The clock moving. They said that Notre Dame should not be in a bowl game with a six and five record. They wanted to prove they could play in a bowl game against the top team. Right now, they're holding on to the lead. We'll be back here right after this. This is the running of the fullback tonight. Chris Smith, who had a high career game for him, Jack McNell. When you get your two running backs. The Notre Dame youngsters. Two running backs are both over 100 yards. That's the balance that you're seeking in your offensive backfield. And Chris Keel has thrown well, Kurt, during those periods where he had to mix it up to set up his runs. Chris Smith has run for 104 yards, Pinkett for 106 yards. Smith made a big difference. They couldn't key on Pinkett all night. 
stop Pinkett was the cry of BC, but Chris Smith was running away. They're down to 10 seconds. And there it is. And Jerry Faust is breathing a lot easier tonight. He's been under tremendous pressure here. Jack Bicknell just signed a new contract. He's done a fantastic job at Boston College of starting their program really rolling. Two fine teams, Kirk, playing an excellent football game under very difficult weather conditions. We had only two turnovers on each team. The temperature was 11 degrees above zero, and they played hard. And uh, I'll salute the fans who came out. Look at Faust, how happy he is. Oh, All right. Get the count. We're going to have this word now from our local stations, and then we're going to be back down on the field with some interviews with some of the personalities of this game. There's Jerry Foss getting the Liberty Bowl trophy. Uh, a coach under fire for the record this year. In fact, uh, he'd have to go 78 and 2 to equal Eric Procedian's record, but he is going in there. He's a very positive thinker. He says, I just am starting the job, and I think we're still going to have a great team next year. And he's very happy tonight. Uh, I don't say this takes all the heat on you. will never, if you just lose one game in Notre Dame, there's heat on you. But that's true everywhere. Tonight, yeah, that's true <laughs> everywhere. You should know it. You had those great records. But he did it tonight. He upset Boston College. And uh, your impression he, uh, of the game, Bud Wilkinson? Well, the key play, uh, in retrospect, was the block punt by Notre Dame. They got the ball on the Boston College six-yard line and scored from there. The block punt was made possible because the kicker for Boston College, Mahalik, was not able to catch the ball. It penetrated to his stomach. He did not fumble it, but that delay was just long enough to let Notre Dame block the kick. You can't very often go back and say one play made that much difference, but in this game it was. Also, the Notre Dame defense was able to keep Flutie off balance most of the evening. There he is. Always a little gentleman, though, Doug Flutie. He has a young brother, a senior at Natick High School, who's quite a player, a runner. You see him somewhere next year. There goes Jerry Faust off the field. Yeah, and that's a big, big moment in the life of any coach. We're going to be back. We'll try and line up an interview or two for you. And we'll be back here again. The final score, Notre Dame 19, Boston College 18. Doug, on behalf of